All right. It's the Cares None Be Dope podcast. I am your host, Chris Cares None, and I'm with my co-host, Derek Fisher. What's up, baby? Hello. How are we? We're good, man. We're good. Uh, We're this good. is a special episode, man. This is lovely, man. This is on the fly, too. Wait, wait. For, for many reasons, though. For many reasons. Yeah. This is very one, on the fly. This is, this is the first episode where we have three people. Yeah, shout out. Yeah, so this is, we finally got, we figured it out somehow. And yeah. we have a special also, guest. We got a special very, guest. Very, very, I might have very, very special guest. Uh, before we tell this man, the people, what his name is, he's uh, extremely close to me. Uh, I would argue one of the most genuine human beings I've ever met in my life. And you said that to me multiple times. Like, like literally just like, the, 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 the definition of a good dude. You know what I'm saying? Joey Free, everybody. Joey Free, how you doing, man? Yeah, what's going on, y'all? What's good? What's Woo! good? Now, <laughs> so for the people listening, like I said, he's like in the circle. He's in the circle circle. Would you agree mm -hmm. with that, uh, D? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, we all met each other when we worked at, uh, well, I met Joey. I'll let you tell the story, Joey, because you always to tell that story about how you and I met. <laughs> I love that story. I, uh, so we met a claim That's jumper. It. We were working at claim jumper. But my very first day, I was sitting down with the manager going through my training. And <laughs> Chris walks up to talk to the manager. And he's having a conversation with her, not really saying nothing to me. And then the manager's like, oh, Chris, by the way, this is Joey. And he just kind of briefly was like, oh, hey, what's up, man? And <laughs> <laughs> it's just on to the day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what the fuck was I supposed to say? Like, I don't know who this nigga is, you know. And you know how it is when you've been serving in places and new cats come in, you know, a lot of motherfuckers don't last that long. You'd be like, all right, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then, true that, true that. And then me, I met D'Eric, as everyone already knows. We worked at uh, White Chocolate. White Chocolate, yeah. Now how yeah. D'Eric and Joey met is Joey ended up working at White Chocolate. But we didn't work together at White Chocolate. No. Yeah, oh, no? No, we, so we met through you. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the first, <laughs> time we met, the first time we met, Chris, you were like, oh, hey, like, come kick it with me. I'm going to my buddy D's house. And we actually went to, you were living with your, uh, at, at the fam still. So we went yeah. I met you at your family's house. Uh, for the first and time. we kicked it in the basement. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah we got the pool table and shit. Yeah. Josh and Adam was there, too. Uh, wow, yeah, 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 that's cool, that's cool, that's good, that's yeah. cool. That's, 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 that's what's up then. Yeah, it's nice. Hey, y'all hey, 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 welcome, niggas. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Uh, nah, that's my homie, that's my homie. So check this out. One of the main reasons why I wanted to get you on, Joey, and mm -hmm. me and, and me and D'Eric was talking about this yesterday, and this is actually really big, I'm on this, me and D'Eric is on this right now, is being surrounded by like-minded individuals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I remember even before I was kind of what I'm on now, you was already kind of on when you was back in Chicago because you now live in Pennsylvania. Uh, Hershey, Pennsylvania, where the chocolate. Yeah, Hershey. Where the chocolate made. Yeah, chocolate City, worked, for real. Right. Uh, and if, if so, when you worked in when you lived in Illinois, mm -hmm. you was already trying to get your real estate thing. You was already on trying nice. to get it popping. Yeah, trying, yeah, definitely. And. I, I wasn't quite there mentally. I just, you know, I wasn't there yet. Now, let me ask you this. You Do you have like an entrepreneur? Would you say you have an entrepreneurial mindset? I definitely would. Ah, oh, man, it's tough. Like, I want to be entrepreneurial mindset. But I ain't gonna lie. Entrepreneur, entrepreneurship is hard. It's hard. A lot of people that choose to take the leap, you finally get in and take the leap. You realize that that shit ain't easy. It's hard. So I've always tried to do things like that because that's how I was raised. My dad opened businesses. My stepdad opened businesses. So that's kind of just how I've been raised. I've seen other people ahead of me do that. So that's what I wanted to kind of follow their path because I see the successes and, you know, to be fair, the failures that they had. And I wanted to try to do that for myself, create that for myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, and dear, you say you, you got that for moms. Oh yeah, just strictly. <laughs> I actually Definitely. got off the phone with your mom. Me and your mom's talked for like an hour today. Yeah. Yeah, you that's know, she's telling me feeding it. She be feeding it. And, and so the reason why I wanted to get you on, Joey, is because I have noticed you've been kind of doing, you've been posting and kind of really into the whole stock market thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I know D'Eric is in the stock market thing. 
So I know I was I was kind of balls deep into it when the whole game stopped. I was like, wait, what is what's going on? You know, I, like, what the fuck is all hey, niggas making money? Niggas get rich. <laughs> so then I just started, you know, like, oh shit, you know. And because now I have become a small business owner, I'm like, I'm trying to find new ways to to turn. I I keep hearing if you're making money one way, you're too close to making no money. Yeah. So like trying to get the you know multiple streams of income. So I'm trying to figure out how to do that, you know. And uh, and I just I want to be surrounded, and I want to have more conversations with with people in because because things like this what we're about to do right now is is how shit sparks. Yeah. Would you agree? Oh, 100%. And yeah. you agree with that too, right, D? Absolutely. So I was just like, you know what? Let's chop it up, man. So let's chop it up. So how you been doing with the stock market, man? Uh, so I'll be honest, man. I was in it a few years ago. So I, I kind of taught myself some of the basics. A uh, handful of years ago, I was trying to just that thing. I was doing real estate. I was still working at the restaurant, uh, you know, full time, to be honest. And I was like, man. I, I knew about the multiple streams of income. So I said, I'm going to try and learn the stock market. You know, I'm not trying to be stuck, stagnant, one spot my whole life. So I right. uh, taught myself the basics and did okay, actually, because back then I was like, it was right before all the marijuana stocks kind of popped. So I did a bunch of research on that and I invested in like three or four marijuana stocks and they all happened to pop. Mm. So I got lucky there and I've just been kind of, you know, one of the investing sides of it is just let it sit and let it grow. And that's kind of what I've been doing. And uh, now that I'm back into it, I'm you know a little bit older. Want different things in life now, and I want to <laughs> I want to teach myself how to further advance that because I got I got friends, people that either directly know or friends of a friend, and they've been doing really well in it. And it's all been in the last year. They literally went from knowing nothing about the stock market to teaching themselves everything. Some people are making six figures now because they just taught themselves about, and that's what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And commit yourself to that shit. Yeah, yeah. Pete, like, how, how? I know you're kind of deep into the game too. So, like, what, so let, let, let's chop it up because I'm, I'm still out of y'all, out of us three. I'm the, I'm on the back end, but I'm, I'm right. dipping my toe in that water. So, Got you. so, so, from what you know of the stock market, right? So, some, yeah, let's, let, let's chop it up about the stock market. Yeah, for sure. So, my journey with the stock market happened when the pandemic happened. So, we're talking literally a year ago. So when the pandemic happened, I was just like, man, we got to get, I got to get some streams. You know what I mean? I got to get some, I got to figure this money shit out. And so um, eventually I ended up coming around the stock market and then real estate. I, I understood that real estate, historically speaking, real estate and the stock market are the two biggest money-making industries in the entire world, historically, historically speaking. Okay. So those are the biggest investments. So if you want to get involved in some actual money, what's making shit happen, that's that's it that ownership in that so i started to get into real estate and i pretty much taught myself through youtube university you know what i mean and just learned my shit learned about the etfs dividends and whatnot and it's more so the basics you know what i'm saying i'm pretty sure joey's way more versed because he's been in for years um but just learning the basics of um the the stock market and just being involved in it, and it turned into a, like a video game honestly mm -hmm. but with real money but like you know, you're investing in yourself. If I felt, you know what? I, I don't know if it's like this for you, Joey, but oftentimes I feel guilty when I just have money sitting in my checking account. Because I'm like, this money has to be moving. I have to have it in some type of account. You know what I mean? And um, I have the same thing with the real estate. So I ended up finding out about this, uh, um, this, this app with this Fundrise, it's called, it's called, and it's a real estate app. And what it is, is you own shares of different um, pieces of property. Okay, so it's basically set up like a stock. You just own shares of a piece of property and when it pays off, then it pays you back dividends and stuff like that. Yeah. So I was, and so basically it, 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 the stock market and this kind of situation the pandemic happening, it kind of had me in a situation to where I had to think about like, just how I'm gonna get it in different ways. You know, I wanted to kind of be on that grind and just like figure out myself and, or or just the next step. I wanted to take full advantage of this. And then the stock market, I just knew that that was the number one thing to get into. And I knew how this shit was going to like I was going to never have this time in my life again. So mm -hmm. this money that I'm about to get, let's let's fucking make this shit work. So I just had to make it work. So right now I have like four thousand. And I, you know what? I'm sorry to be talking so much. But, you know, one thing that I learned um, mostly about money this year, this past whole year is that we got to be more open about that shit. 
Like we really got to start being open about like I, the more research I did on uh, YouTube University, <laughs> um, the more I understood like the people who have like their money success and whatnot, they're just open about their money. Like they're, this is my stock portfolio. This is what I have in it. This is why I invest in. If you do this, you do that. Like we can be more inclusive about money and just help people out. Like this shit is for us. And it's so fucking much money in this world. Like if you're not involved in this stuff, you're not helping out your neighbor. You know, so yeah. I'm the That's kind of like what I've been learning. Like you know, you know, y'all know me. When I when I get when I'm on something, I go balls deep. You know what I'm saying? So what I've been learning about what motherfuckers who are entrepreneurs and people getting money is that, or the way to do it is to ultimately you have to offer a value most times. So I, it feels like when people would give that information, if you put it to me, and maybe this is a little spiritual, but when I put good information out there, like real value for free then you make money on the back end. Absolutely. So, so that's kind of what, and I didn't, and I just been learning this, but I didn't realize that I had been doing this already with my own personal brand by mm -hmm, giving mm -hmm. all the content and just whether it be comedy or whether it be inspiration, I was just giving, and I wasn't even thinking about money. That wasn't even, I would just, I just wanted to fucking do it. Right. So then like when me and Derek talked about this in the live podcast, last podcast, Joe, when I finally said, you know what, let me try this. Then it, it had a nice pop because people had already felt a value from the brand for years. Now. Absolutely. So right. it makes sense why people would want to start showing what they got going on. Because I, to me, people who are wealthy have an abundance mindset. Y'all agree with that, Joe? Uh, I do definitely agree with that, man. Oh, yeah, you have to be. You have to. You have to. I know. Personally, to I've had a very, personally, I've had a scarcity mindset with about a lot of shit in life. You know? Mm -hmm. Like whether it come to girls or whether it come to work, you know, just worried that. But then it's like you realize that there really is enough to go around. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? There's enough to go around. And that's how I feel about money. It's just so fucking much to go around, man. And to not be tapped in. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like, crazy. Well, like, I, I mean, because you are, I definitely agree with that. Though. No, go ahead. There's, like you said, so much money. Like, there's a quick example um because right now i'm trying to teach myself if you haven't heard of uh stocks um in, in stocks it's called options you could trade options contracts you can make some quick money but you can also get they like to stay so you get clapped real quick if you don't know what you're doing but uh, mm. last, last week i literally watched a guy call out a play and within two and a half hours granted he put up a lot of money in two and a half hours made a little over 40k mm. In two hours. And it was like, if I had the funds in my account and I literally could have copied and pasted his play, I could do the same thing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's not a lot of copy paste. You, like, you don't even have to be super smart about shit. It's just about mm -hmm. knowing who's who's got it going on. Yeah, exactly. Just follow them. Like, just follow them. It's fine. Mm -hmm. You know? And just to, yeah. to, to think about owning, to think about ownership in that way. Whereas something that you wear or something that you use every single day, you now own a piece of that. So it's not just that consumer mindset. I know Chris and I, we talked about that a couple of podcasts ago, just talking about that consumer mindset. But when you get into the stock market, it really makes you understand like, man, I'm involved in this shit. Like I can, I own this thing, you know, I own this McDonald's I'm going into, mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, I like, it, it, it sets a different mindset about it. Yeah. Um, and it's involved in your actual money and the growth of it, and and it's it's cool. It's some cool shit. So let me ask y'all this for because y'all a little bit more deep, and especially Joe. You know the term paper hands and diamond hands, right? Diamond hands meaning you you you. It's easy for you to hold on to a stock no matter what. Paper hands meaning you're gonna sell, right? So from what I know is the whole GameStop situation. They kept saying we want diamond hands because you got to hold on to it. Don't be a bitch, pretty much. Whereas if you got paper hands. Shit hands, that means you're a sell, and that's how you make money. So let me ask y'all this. How do you, and I know you said you're working on this, Joe. How do you mentally mm -hmm. sit on a stock when you know it's doing this? Oh, my God. I'm, <laughs> I mean, like what do you personally do? What I've been personally, like, I've been, I'm going to go through a big learning phase because when I got back in, it was after all the, I got in after the pandemic. So, like, I got in, like, the last, like, six months which if you got in before that a year ago, like you did D, you could be on top of some good coin right now for sure. But um, so my thought process behind that because I've been learning is that you really got to dive in, you got to learn. Um, if you don't invest in yourself and the knowledge and the tools first, your money is going to just, it's going to disappear. You ain't even going to see that money. So with that, 
if you if you're really following, learning, watching a chart, you gotta pick up chart patterns. You gotta look at previous highs, previous lows, and to sit on something that's just constantly going back up and down like that. If it's a volatile stock, you gotta just look at it. You gotta read. You gotta read the news about it. You gotta see what people are talking about. If you're not sitting there talking about it and you know getting all that knowledge put into your head and you know you're able to understand and remember everything, you're gonna have a hard time because you're gonna be wanting to. Oh man, it's it's going down. Do I, you know, do I sell? It's going up. You know, what, what, what do I do? You've got to be, you got to know your risk. It's the, it's a risk versus reward going in every time. If you know, you know, your risk going in, you know, you could take this amount of risk to get this amount of reward. If you're not comfortable holding, you're just in it for, you know, a day trade or something like that. Now, that, so that was, let me interrupt. So that's about to ask you, are you more in the day trading or are you more in the, in the other thing? So financially, you gotta you gotta have a good little bank little bank to be a you know a consensus day trader because multiple um, trading platforms they only let you do a certain amount of day trading. Yeah, trade. I'm about to say about three or so. Yeah, three every five trading days. So if you only right, do, right. You only do three and five trading days before you get marked as a pattern day trader, mm-hmm. then that that's a problem because you can't really do much with it. So right now, until I can hit a certain level financially, I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm gonna do my three day trades every uh, three day trades every in every five day cycle, and then I'm gonna do mostly swing trades, which is just going from one day to the you know beyond a day. Um, and then and to add to that too, Joey, not not to cut you off. I'm sorry. I was gonna say just to add to that, I think it's like if you make a certain amount of money, then you can day trade as much as you want. Yeah. So most of them, it's um, it's once you get you have to have twenty five k sitting in your account. Right. At all, at all times, you go below 25k. That that pattern day trader, you know that market. Mm-hmm. But if you stay above that, you could do it. Or um, there's a new platform I like. It's called Webull. Webull is on mm-hmm. a cash account with settled funds. You can day trade as many times as you want. But let's say hypothetically you got a thousand dollars, and then you throw a thousand dollars in the stocks for that day through day trades. You can't can, you can't tap back into that because that thousand dollars is tied up and those funds don't settle immediately. So if the funds don't settle immediately, you can't use them that day. So then you gotta wait until your funds settle, which could take a day, two days, three days. It, it kind of depends whenever the platform is that you're using. We get now, real, I've heard real from with the it. research that I do because I follow this dude named Meet Kevin and he's like this financial stud. <laughs> I think I sent you him, Joey. The dude's for real. He's got like two million followers. He's like legit, you know, for real. Yeah. But what I heard from him and then following other people, they say a good way to beat having paper hands is to only invest in companies that you actually believe in. As opposed to a lot of people, especially if you daydream, you you don't really give a fuck about the company. Like most of those people who put the money on that GameStop don't give a fuck about GameStop. No, that's accurate. I mean, they definitely say, you know, invest in what you like, invest in what you wear, invest in where you eat, you know, different things like that. Um, because if it's a stock that you like, you're naturally going to want to know what it's doing. I mean, if I go and invest in, if I go and invest in an electric company, and I don't care a thing about electric or electricity or anything like that. It doesn't make sense for me to invest in that. If I don't know it now, you really got to know what you're doing if you're trading that right there. But, you know, if I like, if I, I, I like Nike, I might go and invest in Nike because I know I'm going to follow Nike. Naturally, it's going to be all over the news. I don't have to do much searching for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but aside from that, it's like, you know, yeah, you don't want to get caught up. And you want to trade what you like until you get familiar with and you really get that knowledge part of it down. Yeah. And to add to that, um, I will always I will always uh, say that you got to understand what type of investor you want to be. You know, so the people who are in it, like if you have stocks that are the more volatile, who aren't creating dividends for you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The ones that are going, vol- or you know, really volatile. So y- you you got to understand: is that your type of pace, or are you more so like, let me sit, let me get some really cool stocks that's just not going to move much, some some old Warren Buffett ass stocks, and just kind of <laughs> chill, chill, and let those dividends just work over the time. So I had to learn that myself specifically because um, I-, I learned that the volatility wasn't gonna it wasn't gonna work for me. Just seeing that shit going up and down all the time. Yeah. I had to get rid of a lot of stocks. I started off, I started off with like 200 something stocks and I was just weaned it down to like 25, just solid ones to where I could just work with mm-hmm. and just keep on pushing money into it. And, but I had to figure out what type of investor I, I was going to be. So I, I would recommend that for people too. Okay. Well, let me ask y'all this then. So how y'all feel about the whole cryptos? How y'all, how, Joey, how you feel about crypto? They- <laughs> Joey, I know you, I know you into crypto. Uh, to be honest, I, I've, I've heard a lot of people talk about cryptos and I, I've done my fair amount of research. I don't have much invested in crypto. I just, I don't know, me personally, they say that they said that Bitcoin's going to hit 100,000 by the end of this year. 
So you ain't got no Dogecoin? You ain't got no Doge? <laughs> I can no, I got a nose going. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, I mean, I, I'm on Coinbase. I got very minimal invested. It's uh, mostly Bitcoin, but it's it's. I mean, Bitcoin's going for I don't even know what it was today. Fifty five thousand a coin. Probably I don't even. That's a, that's an estimate. I haven't looked at it, but um, with Bitcoin, I mean, yeah, it's it's great. But I mean, I, I want something like stocks where I can get full and complete shares. Versus like a Bitcoin, you can invest, you know, 500 here, 500 there, you know, as many times as you want. But a whole Bitcoin, you don't have, you don't, you have to sit there and tell people, oh, I got 0.64398767 of a, yeah. <laughs> me, I'm, I'm personally more into, I want my shares. Give me my shares. Give me my right. stock. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. With so let me yeah. ask you this. What do you think is a good number to, to, to hop into the investment game? Because the, the reason I asked that is because, there might be a level of how much money you got where it really don't make a difference. Or do you, even if you put in 20 bucks here, is it worth getting started? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's about the build, man. You gotta, you gotta, I think that's the part of investing where you can even get me personally. Like I, I get a kick out of even getting a full share. Cause I do a lot of fractional shares. Mm -hmm. Joey, especially, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I get a kick out of being able to get one share of stuff because I'm so st strategic about how much money I'm putting into things each time I'm putting money into it. You know what I mean? So you get to honestly, these stocks are your babies, honestly. You know what I mean? It's a part of that ownership psycholo uh, psychology that we have. You know, right. we talk about and, that all and you the time. really do own part of the company. Yes, yeah. you do. You do. You have your I'm money invested in. It's crazy how we create these money systems, man. So many of them. So you know, many I, of them. I, uh, to me, that was a foreign idea that the stocks act like you actually own part of that company. Like, right. that, like that's real talk. Uh, <laughs> I heard this one dude, I forgot who it was, but he was, uh, he went to prison and uh, he was as hard as he could sell drugs and shit. So he knew like that, but he, he was, that's all he was doing. And then he was in the cell with this white dude who was, who had his money right. And they, they had some issues. And then, and the dude was like hard. Huh? And the white dude was like, man, you playing the wrong game, bro. And then, you know, the, the black dude's like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, and it's jail. So he got you know, trying to be hard. So anyways, after time and time and time, he started to say, you need to start. You're playing the wrong game financially. Like, like you got to start trading your time for money versus, you know, we were talking about this. Do you yeah. remember, what was it talking about where like your time versus hours worked or like don't yeah. get paid, try not to get paid for your time. Right, is that right, what right, 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 right. You want you don't want to you right. You don't want to get paid for your time. You want to get paid for your like your what you create or you, basically. So even if that's a business of your own, you want to get okay. paid for the systems to create create its money for you. Right. Well, so you know so, so, I mean? so, go, so to go back to the point, so he's going back for this guy. So then when he got out, he had learned all this shit about stocks and shit, right? So he's at his boy. He's at he's in the club with his boys popping bottles and shit. And then uh, dude was like. Uh, he was trying to get them on because now he's kind of, you know, smart business minded, but his boys just want to kind of pop bottles. But they was all right. drug deals. So they had money. But, you know, but the, this guy just you got his whole different mindset. He says that he goes, man, don't y'all want to like y'all like Gucci, right? He's like, yeah, you like you like Prada, right? Yeah. So why don't we own part of the company? And that's how he got. He's yeah, y'all probably heard of I him. Saw that. Wall that's Street Trapper. Yeah, yeah, I, I watched. Have that, you heard but, of him, Joe? Uh, the Wall Street Trapper? No, I haven't. Heard, I haven't seen that. No. Nah. I know you follow that Chris on, uh, Jones cat, right? Yeah, uh, Chris Johnson, yeah. Chris Johnson, Chris Johnson, yeah, yeah. You That's should cool. follow Wall Street Trapper too, man. He be putting people on game too. Yeah, but I just thought that, that was interesting because I would have never thought like, wait, I could I could own part of Nike, like literally. Mm -hmm. You know, and then like you could even be part of like the, the decision making, no matter what is if, if you own stock, you can be part of somebody's decision making, right? It makes you kind of more involved, like Joey said, when you do your research and whatnot. It makes you more involved in it because you you have that investment, you have that ownership. So no, but I mean like is, like they can literally ask the stockholders questions, like because at the end of the day, like sometimes your your vote would matter if you own the stock, right? Yeah, they they send they'll send out little um either like they'll call them questionnaires or they'll let you know like hey we have a we have an investors meeting coming up, um you know I've been a part of so many different stocks at this point that is like. Certain companies, if you own more shares, they'll let you get past like, okay, you know, the first 10 questions and you know, it open the door to the next 10 questions, whatever it is. And say, right, at this time, uh, shareholders with less than, you know, 500 shares, you know, we're going to um, ask you all to, you know, exit the meeting and we're going to move on to the next phase and things like that. So they will give you more opportunity and they will allow you, yes, to make partial decisions. I mean, who knows what our, you know, 
how, how much yeah. effect that it has. But yeah, they will let you make some decisions. They'll let you answer questions, kind of help them out. What? Um, how do you feel about? Uh, like, do you have any dividend stocks? Uh, personally, not yet. That's the one thing I've kind of I've been trying to figure out so many different parts of the game, and then um, dividends I haven't really looked into yet. I'm starting to learn more about dividends. I should, you know, get paid back on the stock. I'm trying to figure out options right now. That's my thing. But when okay. it comes to dividends, dividends, dividends are dividends are that's a good move. I mean, the uh, the Chris Johnson dude, um, you know, he created his own brand, Well Squad. I'm gonna shout them out real quick because that's what has been my main thing of learning. Because through their community, I've learned everything. I've all the confidence that I have to go and, and trade now is through them. But he has a phrase get money by income and that literally you know if you're going to your whatever your whatever your hustle is take that hustle whatever it's a nine to five where you got you know you're selling whatever it is you take that money that you get and you buy income meaning you buy stocks with dividends that are going to pay you back in the long run because you're going to absolutely yeah because you're going to get hit twice you're going to get the you know that price fluctuation from the stock itself going and, but, yeah, that, but up or down, you're going to get a kickback from the dividends too. So you're getting paid twice on one thing. So get money by income. That's a real thing, man. It really is. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Strong too. See, it's, it's, it's the, it's conversations like this mm-hmm. that need to happen all the time in my life. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. like, like, like I'll, I'll be honest. I, I don't, I, I really don't listen to music like I used to. Mm-hmm. And the reason why is because yeah, is, is because I feel like time I could be like listening to another podcast or like listening to another be business dude or uh, or like reading a book. I've been reading books lately, so I feel like mm-hmm. I feel like if I'm I, I, maybe I'm just addicted to this shit right now, and I'm balls deep. But it feels like time not going towards that. I can feel like I'm kind of like ah, you know, I feel like I should be working towards whatever the fuck. How y'all feel about that? I mean, you're your grind, man. No, 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 your not me. I'm talking about for y'all. Do y'all, how do y'all feel about, like, when you, shit you're doing, like, on your spare time? Yeah. Is your, is this becoming now more of your spare time shit? Oh, yeah. This is, this is always, like, man, life development is, is the hobby, you know? So when you're in tune with your life like that, when you, when you try to be, when you're trying to work on self all the time, this just kind of becomes part of it. That's kind of how I feel about it. So your 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 intrigue is is like a I don't want to get too deep about it, but it's like survival. So when you look at no, the stock get market, deep, nigga, get deep. Okay, <laughs> get deep for me. Okay, so in, even in my situation, so like I said, I kind of got into it when the uh, when COVID start first started. So for me, it's like taking care of myself meant like survival mode financially. So mm-hmm. it was just like a squirrel trying with a nut. Like I got a store, I got a stock. You know what I mean? Like it, it's 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 just self preservation, man. This mm. shit is it's just the way in the, which we do pan, it. The pandemic kind of clicked that for you. It clicked it for me. It gave me the space and it gave me the opportunity to really try to take advantage. I came to you oh. even like, bro, we got to take advantage of this. Yeah, shit. right like, away. Balls like, deep. I was like, on it, like ready, like let's go. Like before, and, yeah, like like real early in the like first yeah. month or some shit. <laughs> first day, I was like, let's go. I'm in it. Let's, let's and get you to said, it, Joe, so. you've been what? How many years now? So I started investing. We're in 21 now, right? I started investing in like 2017, and right. then I kind of actually the reason I got away from it was because I got marked as a pattern day trader, and I couldn't trade for 90 days. And I was there's your like, lesson, huh? That was my lesson. Oh, yeah. That's the punishment. Yeah. That's the punishment. You get kicked. And back then it was 90 days. So I, I traded all this stock and then boom, hit with the pattern day trader. And I couldn't trade for 90 days. In that 90 days, like a dummy, I was young. I was dumb. Instead of go, instead of saying, you know, what, what can I do in the 90 days to benefit myself? And when, I, when the 90 day, when that cap is finally off, what can I do to progress? I didn't. It kind of took me out of it. Mm-hmm. So luckily in that time frame, well, before the pattern day trade got hit or probably got hit with that. I had invested in the right stocks and it kind of carried it over and, you know, made a little bit of money off of that, but it was just kind of safe way money in, in a sense. Like I was still working, I was still doing real estate, but I know I had the stock money. It's kind of like, you know, a stowaway if I needed it for any particular reason. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But man, I, I wish y'all, you took, y'all took the right mindset. Like when the pandemic hit and you went and did it right away, I wish I did. The pandemic hit, I was out in Vegas I was <laughs> I, I was working in the casinos, but like the last day, like you know, being one of three people to shut a casino down, like 
You know, we had some we had some drinks, we took some liquor, and it was like, man, the pandemic shutting down, the whole strip shutting down. Vegas is gonna be like a party city. So instead of taking the time to learn, which I should have did, I should have, I wish I had the mindset y'all had. I went and I just had fun. And I it, it didn't really kick in for me that I had to start really focusing on things until that unemployment money was about to be done and over with. Yeah. When unemployment money yeah. was about to be done and over with. I was like, I I I still had a few thousand left from the unemployment that I didn't use. But at that, and I was like, Oh uh, shit, next week I get my last little thousand dollars, whatever it is. <laughs> what am I gonna do after that? What am I gonna do right. after that? So that's when I started looking back in the stocks, you know, reopened mm-hmm. my portfolios, reached out to my buddy. A buddy of mine was working for Fidelity. Um, he got me a bunch of like free trades and stuff. So I didn't have to worry about uh commission, uh commission free trades for a little bit. So that got me back into it. And then I slowly progressed. And then, you know, different things just happened with life and stuff. So it took me in a different direction, you know, shifted around, you know, moved back out here. Um and luckily now I've been put in a position where I got that time. I got that time again where I can sit at work with my work computer, but my laptop, my my personal computer sits to the Oh, that's dope. That's dope. It's all right there. So I'm doing stocks most of the day. I'm looking at stocks most of the day, trying to get my nine to five work done real quick. But I'm mostly focused yeah. on stocks. Come home from the day, go to the gym for a little bit, and then I just it's just it's just study time. That's all. Right. It is. That's how I feel. Now hey, study don't, time. Don't get it twisted. So, De'Aaron hit me with some with with some 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 feedback about how I was feeling about my last job. So we chopped it up, and he convinced me. And I probably shouldn't even say this out loud, but. I wasn't comfortable working at that last job no more. Okay. Mm-hmm. For pandemic reasons. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember, but I still, it didn't click until maybe November for me that I have to really put it on when I got that diagnosis. That is when I was like, whoa, life's short. You know, thank mm-hmm. God it's not that bad. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, I'm going to be around for a long time. But that's that clicks like, oh, it's, it's really time. Now, I was already personally a little focused, but in the beginning of the pandemic, I mean, I was kind of bullshitting, but I was like getting mm. my mind right. And listen, it, that was kind of hard in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but but people it, spend time with themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you had what else you going to do? You know what I'm saying? I was in the crib like what? Three by myself, three months straight. Well, what about you? D? It had to be about that. Yeah. Yeah. It was at least that. You so. Know? And personally, I don't mind being in my own head. I know some people can't take that shit. I like being in my own. Y'all ever did a float tank? Nah. No. You ever heard of it? Nah. You ever heard of it? You dude? told me about it. You yeah, told me about it. You, Joey, you gave me a Joey, very this, thorough. Uh, yeah, this shit's crazy. Yeah, I'm about to get Joey, Joey one too. <laughs> <laughs> dude, so uh, a float tank is, is, is a sensory deprivation chamber. And what that is, is a little chamber or like a contraption, maybe like a tub or a little room, but you put yourself in an environment that all of your senses are cut off. So, so you so you get in this room, so you get in this uh, like a tub type thing, and the water floats because there's salt. So you, I think it's called buoyancy, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah. you float. Uh, so now you don't feel gravity, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Then, then you can't hear because you're wearing plugs. You can't see because it's pitch black, no light, nothing. And you can't smell because you're not smelling anything and you can't taste because you're not eating anything. So, so you're literally floating what seems like in space. You, you open your eyes, you close your eyes, you open them, there's no difference. And you just literally, and, and there's no music, so you can't hear anything. And uh, because all of your senses are cut off, you have no, nothing to do but hyper-focus on what you're thinking, right? So like you, you, it's like you're literally, and it'll be the first time you, anyone's, if you've never done this, you've never been in this situation in your life, because even if you were in your mom's womb, you still felt the gravity of the earth. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So what, what this does is it, it's like, it's like meditation on heroin, so to speak. Now talk, and I've done this quite a few times and a lot of people are like, man, I don't know if I could do that. Like a whole hour. Cause you do this for an hour. And yeah. it's, I know it's a whole hour and I, and I ain't gonna lie. I've, so I've done psychedelic drugs. Right. And the whole idea is you just let go. So I'm like, wait, I can, you know, I can do that. I've done some acid mushroom shit. Turn up. Right. <laughs> um, so the guy was like, you want to listen to music? And I'm like, well, no, I don't listen to music. The whole idea is not to. He goes, you sure? <laughs> I'm like, <"Nigga." laughs> like shit, shit, I'm music, I'm there. and he goes, I'm like, no, nah, 
He's like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> so you scared the shit out of me. Sure. I saw like Prince and some shit. Yeah. You sure? So I put this, so uh, <laughs> he put me in the room and, and I got you get naked. You go in there, super clean, super nice. Oh, and like, and then he turns the light off, and you're floating there, right? You're just floating there like this, wet naked, just floating. <laughs> <laughs> dick all out just Sorry, I didn't even do <laughs> dick all out but anyway right so the first five minutes I'm sitting there thinking like oh shit I gotta do this for I gotta do this for an hour I'm like I don't know bro I don't like an hour it is like five minutes felt like an hour and finally I'm like bro you've done mushrooms if you can't if this is literally one hour dude you've wasted two hours scrolling on Instagram you know what I'm saying and this is and you know you're going to get benefits because I did the research on it and, and and it's a meditation on heroin so I knew it was going to be worth it and I trust Joe Rogan who's who's considered the godfather of the float tank so and I trusted him and I did it and I'm telling you Joe mm-hmm. Derek game changer game changer for your psyche I don't know what it is. I don't know what the fuck's going on. But when your brain gets that much attention, no, no distraction, no girlfriend, no phone, no internet, just you, you hashing it out. Whatever you got to hash out, you gonna have, you got no choice but to hash it out. And it ain't nothing dangerous because you just get up, you know, to cut the light on. So it's not like a dangerous thing. I'm telling y'all that shit will get you ready for a pandemic. And that's what I'm saying. So I was actually, it wasn't that bad for me personally. And then I had Xbox. So I was on that bitch all day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but, for, but, but I still had to like, I, I, I felt I was lazy, you know, I'm like, mm-hmm. and, I, and I was drinking a lot. If to be honest, that's what got me to stop drinking. Cause I was drinking five old fashions at night. Oh, really? And you know, old fashions. Oh, and, and I had just learned how to make them. Right. Cause I'm all, I was all, yeah. 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 you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I'm drinking these motherfucking old fashioned and, and, and I make a mean old fashioned, you know. So when they, when they fire and you're an alcoholic, shit, I was that big pop out. And that's <laughs> so not just me, like, everyone was drinking a lot during the pandemic. Yeah, we was playing too, we was playing 2K. You was like, I'm about to make an old fashioned. I'm like, man, I got, I already killed a bottle of wine. I got a bottle of wine. What you need to do? I was like, <laughs> yeah, like, what about D? Was you drinking a little bit in the big? I know you're not really a huge man. drinker. I was having steaks and wine and red wine every fucking night, man. It was it was those plush dinners and shit over hey, here. This what? You you was eating steak dinners every night with wine? Hell yeah, that shit was gravy. I was I was I was I was meditating. I was setting shit up, but I was definitely eating well. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I think I ordered crab legs a couple times. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know what? You know what? I actually, I actually feel like I became more of a chef this year than any year of my life because I was just oh, I like, think a lot I of had to, I literally just, I, me and my lady friend and shit, we just chopping it up every fucking night. Just what's new? We bam, 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 bam every night. So I just learned how to really suffice on some shit. Yeah. So let me ask so you, Julie, what, it up. what would you say the pandemic? Over, like out of everything, what did it? What's the number one lesson you got from the pandemic? Ah oh, man, I mean, a lot of shit happened for me during the pandemic, though. But so that's what I'm saying. So, so yeah. what's the biggest lesson you learned? Oh yeah, uh, Joe, yeah, yeah. The, the pandemic for me, man. I, I don't even know what the number one lesson is. I definitely think that. Um, I definitely think you know, spend this how you want. But like, I, I definitely found like myself, like who I am from it because I started reading too I, I, I'll be the first person to tell you aside from I read an Allen Iverson book on my own when I was in like 10th grade I read it again in like 11th grade and in college aside from that I didn't do reading I never read a damn thing so um, I definitely went out and I was just like man I got to do something different so you know we were we were you know people were hanging out having fun partying drinking things like that but there was always a part of me that was just like I got to figure something out I knew the pandemic wasn't going to last forever, even though we wanted it to last forever for a little bit there. Um, so, yeah, started reading. And then I just kind of found a new part of me eventually, you know, took a little bit of a push from certain individuals. But eventually it led to a, a better, stronger, mentally tough me. And that's honestly, I think mental toughness, I think, is probably a big thing that I got out of the pandemic for sure. Mm, mental what, toughness. what about you, yeah. D? What was the what was the biggest thing did you did you learn overall? What was the biggest lesson you learned from the pandemic? I think we touched on it a little bit last time when I was on the uh, when, we, when I was on the podcast. Um, like life is gonna take care of you. You just gotta take care of it. You know what I mean? So you gotta you are. I'm gonna try to word it the best way I can. 
<laughs> you are who you are, right? But if you give yourself that push within this year's time, so I think about this year's time right now, when we first started, this, when the pandemic first started, I was like, okay, let's let's see how much I can get done within this first year so that I can look back on this in the year's time. You know what I mean? So like you, your life will be what it, what you, what it will be, but you have to kind of put more into it to see the results. <clears throat> and like, so if you kind of live your life, um, to kind of try to see your growth within a year's time or so like that, just whatever your time frame is, it kind of allows you to see like the, the, the growth and the value in your life and how, how much you can get done. So I kind of, it kind of taught me that as a, as a, like the, what I was able to do within this past year, it kind of taught me how that's possible and how to kind of frame that time wise. Okay. All right. I know that's kind of like a. <laughs> I would say the biggest lesson that I learned, and it, 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 there's, it's, it's two. It's a toss up between really understanding what having abundance means. And that's yeah. something I just recently hit on. So this is like, this is a new one, but technically we're still in the pandemic. So I'm counting what I learned a month ago, but it's like really that powerful to me is thinking in abundance and or being 100% authentic. I, I feel like the more authentic I have become to, to my friends, to women, to my social media following, but most importantly, myself, mm -hmm. that's when shit's starting to feel like it's trajecting in a, in a better direction. And it was when I started saying, you know what, I'm, I'm just gonna start being authentic. I'm not lying or have fibs. If someone asks me the truth, I'm going to tell you, you know? And, and what I've learned that at the end of the day, if you tell somebody what you believe is the truth and they fuck with you, they gonna fuck with you, even if they want to hear it or not, right? Yeah. Person sure. Personally, I like hearing tough shit. You know, some of the biggest level ups in my life personally is when Steve, the reason why he, the reason why he, I, mean, I don't know if you know this, Joe, Derek, me and you might've talked about this. The reason why Steve, and I know that the people who've heard this heard this, but cares none. <laughs> the reason why Steve is my fucking, my soul, is because he's he's always been there in my toughest moments. And, and I've, I've leveled up the day after like the toughest of my moments. Like when my mom died, he was like literally next to me. She like that and he was there for me. So, and that wasn't even like he even gave me some hard advice. He was just there, vicious. Anybody who would have been there at the time probably would have got a little boost, but it, he just happened to be there. Number two, um, I had a couple, we were in Vegas and anyone who knows, I like to get a little turned up in Vegas. <laughs> and I would always have a lot of episodes when I was super, super, super drunk in Vegas. And, and it would, the, the, the conversation would always be like, I see Steve out here balling, Steve out here playing all these checks. He's my brother, right? And he's letting me kind of live vicariously through him, right? But he's the one doing it. And it wasn't like a jealousy thing. It was more like a, how in the fuck is this my brother? And I'm not even remotely close to being able to do that. You know, I'm not even close. I'm I, I, like, I'm not even in the same hemisphere financially as he is and then and he, and he could do his soul and, and, and then not even care about the the, the bullshit glitz and glam with like me who has nothing but i'm all you know and I, he's been there and, and, and he told me like i'll never forget when he said this i'll never forget this because i was sitting there freaking out to him and i'm crying and shit vegas then he goes Scylla, stop trying to be me you're you're broke you're not me i don't like you for the i like you for the Scylla. like just be you stop trying to and and then I'll never forget when he told me that it it, it got a, a weight off my shoulder because then I had to like be something that I was not at the time, you know, because I was I was mm -hmm. my whole thing is you are the company which you keep. And I still believe that. So I'm kind of thinking, well, if this motherfucker's out here balling, how the fuck is he really trying to fuck with me if I'm not on it? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's I, different. I, right. But but I think what I've learned, what my value is, is and I think this is about to change. I think I'm getting more financially literate now. But at the time, he would say, the reason I like you had nothing to do about money at all is because you inspired me to do this or whatever. So that helped me get over that. But he always, heard, going back to the original point, he was always there to hear some hard shit. So I like hearing when this shit's tough. I, you know, I, I like in the pandemic feeling like a fucking loser. Like, man, this shit, like, well, you know what I'm saying? Because that's, you, you want to feel like a loser, bro? You know, I know I don't. I don't like that feeling. Yeah. Now you need those days. I agree. You do need those days. So you kind of like, okay, you 
get your ass up a little bit. Okay, I need some little spark, a little spark, I should say. You know, yeah, yeah man. I need those days too. Like, okay, all right, I, I have a little, a couple days, maybe two days or so, where it's kind of sluggish. I'm like, then on that third day, okay, dear, get your ass up. Let's get some shit going. Let's have a fucking pep talk. You know, so because I, I mean, because here's the truth, uh, Joe and D. Like, ain't nobody about to give you shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Literally ain't nobody giving us shit. You gotta create it. You gotta create it. And that's okay. So I, I like okay. I like the whole topic of financial literacy because I was gonna say this. You don't necessarily have to. I think the concept of working for it, we kind of have to start changing that narrative from our generation on. We got to start thinking about creating it. We got to create different streams of revenue, not work for different streams of revenue. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, um, yeah, I just want to emphasize we were, that's what we that. That's what we were talking about earlier with the like, stop trying. To, so even if you let's say you uh, you're a consultant, and you and you uh, and your services go for a thousand dollars. OK, and you can get two of those a day. So that's uh, that's two thousand dollars a day. That's good money. But then it's capped mm -hmm. because you can't do more than that many consultations. So that's what I meant, working for your time, even like so that you need to do stuff that can like. Like grow more like, for instance, make an ebook and that shit could just keep making money, keep making money, whereas it has nothing to do with your personal time. You put the time in mm -hmm. up front and then it just keeps making you money. So this I'm is why to I'm Go ahead. Part of the reason with my um, my two music albums, my two music projects that I created, just recreating residual income since 2019, since my first project. So that's kind of a revenue stream that, that you put the money in up front for it, you do the work, and it's a creative piece. Mm -hmm. And then you send it off and then you allow it to work as much as it's going to work for the rest of its life. And that's it. And you just put the maintenance money into it and whatnot, you know, your fees and whatnot throughout like five year pro programs and shit like that through Apple. But other than that, you let it live his lifespan and make his money for you. Yeah. So it's kind of the same way. And here's the thing, like, you gotta you gotta learn that shit. Like, like, how do you mm -hmm. like if you so Joey, you had a upbringing where people were around business and shit, right? Yeah. So your dad had businesses, stepdads had businesses. Yeah. So you've been around that. So it's, it's probably easier for you. Would you agree to you just at least seen it in the backgrounds to know that this is probably the way to, to live life? Yeah, honestly, I mean, since I was 16, when I really realized that I realized that I wanted to do something, I thought I wanted to always do something in real estate. And, you know, I became an agent, we did, did different things in real estate. And that's what I thought was just the past. So yeah, it was always kind of in the background. My dad always tried to create businesses. He had a, he had a fish store. He had a, a bird photography business. Yeah, the damn birds. Yeah, we had the birds. <laughs> yeah, big ass birds too. <laughs> yeah, fucking Black and birds. Um, but yeah, so I saw that growing up and then I realized that not realized, but I seen my, my stepdad, you know, my mom hasn't worked since my first brother was eight years old. That's going on 15 years. And that's because of, he's always been doing real estate. So entrepreneurial mm -hmm. mindset, while my dad's businesses didn't work out, he's still trying to do that. He's got something in the works now on the, you know, the marijuana side, trying to do something still 65 years old still trying to create something entrepreneurial yeah. as a 65 year old. And then my stepdad has been doing real estate and he's got successful businesses. My stepdad em employs me right now. So, and this mm -hmm. is from a business that he created 14 years ago. So it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's it. Put that revenue. Yeah, it's like so my, my stepdad created something. When we first moved to Hershey back in 2006, I think the business might have started around 2007, shit's still going. And now, now he employs me. So that's, that's, that's where, you know, that entrepreneur that you know you set it up now it comes back later you have a successful business strong backing it's just gonna keep you going for a while and he created a revenue stream for the family that's that's beautiful yeah, that's the, i that's, love that that's what he's done that's why I, you know my stepdad's almost like my idol and i told him this too because he did he did something that created an opportunity for an hour my mom my little brother's me my mom hasn't worked again in 15 years my little brothers were given everything i was given everything within reason and it's just like why would I not want to do something? Why would I not want to follow his footsteps when he created such a successful business, successful life, happy for everybody? Yeah, I want to be an entrepreneur. Right. Joey, is it, isn't it crazy how the older we get, our idols and shit become the people that's right next to us? Right in front of you. Guess what? I think we had a conversation about that a couple of episodes, Chris. Like, who's your people you look up to? And I was just like, it's just my mama at the end of the day. I, I used to look up to these other people and sports figures or whoever have you. I'm like, no, nah, it's kind of just my mom. You yeah. know, that with that entrepreneurial mindset, just kicking the financial game all the time and 
having that voice to just uh, talk to with it and to see the back of house shit with it. So now mm-hmm. it's funny how it's like right in your face, people, as you get older with it, you know, you start to realize it's really the Joey, people you look like, up to. Like I said this to Dierica maybe a couple podcasts ago, um, <clears throat> I came to the realization that it was my grandmother because yeah. she was the one who taught me, you know, that I could, that I could, that anything's possible. And, and, and what's funny is that didn't mm-hmm. even register all those years. It, that just popped into my head like a year ago that that that, that was even a thought. I just kind of thought I was just dope because I was just raised, you know, I was just born dope. But it was like, no, she actually <laughs> instilled me in that because I was not that way at all. You know, she was always like, if you think you can't say you can, I'll never forget that. I'm gonna actually put that on a T-shirt. Cause if you oh, hell yeah, that's hard. It's, it's so fire and, and it means so much to me. So I just know it's going to hit because it, it, and if it don't hit, who gives a fuck? Because it means that much to me. So I, I agree with you, D. You don't realize mm-hmm. that the motherfuckers who influence you the most sometimes be right in your face. Right in their face, man. Raising the hell out of you. Just showing you the way, showing you, showing you, telling you that you feel real life values that you don't really take with you as an adult. Mm-hmm. That like real gems. We've been using that word a lot, Chris. Gems, real mm. gems, real uh, gems. Well, so going back to the original point, if I'm not mistaken, the original point was, uh, oh, so but I wasn't raised. Look at me, circle my circle back game strong. Hey, I know it's good. Strong, strong, baby. I'm today, it. I'm like, that's practice right there. Circle. That's like, hey, yeah. Joey Loki. That's like podcast people's like. That's our shit. Like yeah, we yeah, love yeah, a good circle got, back. Yeah, yeah, especially oh, when you oh, smoke and lead. Yeah, your circle got your circle back game gotta be strong. That shit is gonna be impressive. We be happy about that shit. Uh, <laughs> so, 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 right. you, so Joey was raised with uh with that kind of environment. Mm-hmm. You were taught, Derek, with uh financial literacy. Mm-hmm. And, and your mom was talking to me today because she wasn't taught that, so she had to get it out the mud to learn. And then she oh, yeah. down on you. And mm-hmm. shout out to my grandmother for teaching me like how to be to take care of myself. But she wasn't financially literate. Now she was mm-hmm. fine. We talked about this day. She's financially responsible, so like she'll pay her bills and you know she knows how to do her checking account. But she doesn't know how to build wealth. Right, and that's how could she yeah. or if she doesn't, you know, she has no idea. No one taught her, and then she wasn't yeah, around in the internet age, you know, she's right before that, kind of. So, like, how do you know? Absolutely. I, so, this my, for me, and I'm, I'm I'm telling y'all, I'm just on this at 37, 37 yeah. years old to finally understand that, oh, like how to create wealth, you know, and I just didn't have that, and and I mm-hmm. and I get that through niggas like y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like Steve's <laughs> entrepreneur. Y'all, you yeah. entrepreneurs. And I just, and I feel like, in the, we, to be honest, Joey, you probably should be on the podcast often so we can always chop it up. Absolutely. Shit. Yeah, we might as well kick it, chop it up for real. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, t- and then just run ideas by each other because I'm telling you. And then we're giving out shit that we're learning to people who might fuck with us. So mm-hmm. somebody right. might be listening to this podcast and be like, you know what? Let me go check that out. Mm-hmm. So like we can get a there's a lot of good value in this and and I just, and and I like you niggas. I mean, I love you niggas. Uh, real though. So tell me, uh, what what's going on in Pennsylvania, man? How like I, you, I remember you left Pennsylvania, went to Vegas. Oh no no wait. So how, how, yeah, tell me the situation. Oh man, all right. So I I've been, I'm, I'm moving around a lot. So. Uh, yeah, when I left, I left Vegas, went to PA. Uh, I always, every time I go to explain PA, I always say I did some time in PA. I got to cut that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, uh, high school, college out here, and then left here, went to uh, Illinois. That's when I met up with y'all. Like, I think I moved June or July of 2011 and started working at CJ in like September. So that, that, shit, was, that shit was real quick before we linked up. But yeah, uh, but getting back mm. to PA, I mean, it was it was something that you know there's good people out here there, there really is there's good people out here people i made uh not people i went to school with people that i i worked with and people that i got to know through through just work and like having fun with people not like these people that i went to you know high school college things like that but um i got back out here because honestly like i'm a you know one of my best one of my best friends is who i'm dating now like this is my, this is my girl we've been we've been we knew each other since we were 17 years old always been cool, always been tight. We were always friends, never, no, nothing never happened to us. Like we ain't never kissed or nothing until uh, like October of, the, of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> so like, um, so yeah, she was out here obviously. So when we started dating, I was immediately trying to find ways to 
move out here be closer to her because she has um you know certain reasons why she can't she has to stay out here just you know she has a kid and crazy baby right, right, right. like that so um with that being said <laughs> with that um i had to move i had to move here and my stepdad has businesses you know it, it loops back you know to the entrepreneurship he created this business my mom as much she didn't want me to leave vegas she was like you guys need somebody to work in this company why do you know he has his girlfriend out there he's gonna start going out there why not just see if he wants to work there so my mom suggested it my stepdad my stepdad talked to his business partner and they got me a job out here so i came out here mm-hmm. to and be closer to my girl her kid and the job side of it as well too so i mean it, it all worked out and it was extremely beneficial um got my head in, in a much better place than it was at and yeah, we we good right now, man. We we have we have. I know you because like, Vegas is your hometown, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I know, and, yeah, yeah. See, yeah, there you go. And <laughs> but and I know when you were in Illinois, you was like, man, Vegas is home. Yeah, then, like, yeah. So, Got it tatted then, on you, don't you? Yeah. Right? Just, so right. the reason I'm bringing that up is because I remember you saying, you know, man, I got to get back to Vegas. I'm about, to, you know, then you went to Vegas, and I'm oh, like, yeah, and then yeah. he was up and gone kind of quick. And I get, I understand why, but that's like that, to me, I was like, oh, that's a big move because he was talking about how much he really missed Vegas. Yeah, yeah, he's so, in Vegas mode. Man, so there, yeah, obviously it's a lot, but like Vegas was obviously my home. Vegas was my home. I loved Vegas. Every time after I moved away, every time I went back, it was that much harder to leave. And you know, seeing most of my family and my dad's side of my family was out here, and you know, some of the people I grew up with, my best friend lived out in Vegas. So it was like it was tough for sure going back and forth all the time. But um what I realized was that after living back there for a year and i know it was the pandemic and you know things were different it, it, that, that things were different it was just different it was different than i remember growing up as a kid it still had that excitement factor even though i was going back four or five times a year to vegas vegas had that excitement factor when i lived there again everybody that i grew up with they had moved on at that point a lot of people would don't even live in vegas anymore that i was hanging out with and growing up with it was just a, a handful of people so vegas became different i started working the casinos and everybody that works in the casinos They'll tell you, you need to dedicate yourself to the casinos because the casinos own you now. And working in the casinos, you were you weren't nine to five. You were you were nine to ten, meaning thirteen hour days. You get there in the morning, you're not leaving until way late at night. Or if you're working, that, that that's a day shift. You're you're working swing shift. You're getting in at two three o'clock. You might not leave till two three in the morning every every time you work in graveyard same thing you oh, yeah. 11 not leaving until 9 10 o'clock and you're just it gets old man so going out there doing that trying to prove myself to these people like i know what i'm doing let me do this shit you know the employees love me don't get me wrong manager they didn't, they didn't get no shit they didn't care so it's like that wore me down then the pandemic hit different things you know relationship wise hit and then it was just like Vegas really is somewhere I want to go to and be excited about. I don't want to tarnish my own hometown because I'm getting sick sure. here. So it's like, for sure. I needed the opportunity. I needed, I needed what I have now to be able to go and kind of free my, free my mind and, you know, free my body and just kind of get back into the, you know, the kickback, the relaxed part of just being me. And, you know, this opportunity definitely presented itself and I jumped on it. But then, and then it's like, but, but it's also a benefit because now you're on like this path of development though. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. Like during the pandemic, I started reading books, um, got back into the stocks a little later than I, than I wanted to, but yeah, it, it put me there. And now I'm at a point where all I want to do is I just want, I want that. I want to succeed. I want to, I want to, I'm just, I'm just on it right now. So like I'm learning, I'm diving in every chance I get, I'm learning this, learning that my girl's probably getting annoyed because I tell her something new every day and she's supportive as hell. But she's like, okay, babe. Yeah, that's cool. Like you're, yeah. That's right, right. I was telling D um, I'm like, bro, we need to, uh, and like, we need to just expand. Well, we're talking to each other. We need to expand the, the like-minded people. That's like probably one of the biggest things that we own right now. Yeah. It mm-hmm. makes sense. It makes sense. As a matter of fact, I'm a reading a book. I'm shit. listening to an audio book right now. It's called The 16 Laws of Success. And it's actually, y'all yeah, ever heard of it? I don't know if you ever heard of it. But anyways, it's the book that was written before Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's it, it's like the not so rich dad poor dad is the watered down version of this book. Oh really? Yeah, and yeah. So and this is one of the dudes we listen to uh, on that podcast, the, uh, the the African dude. I remember. 
he was like, this is the first book you got to read. And it was this book. And what he's talking about in the first chapter is about masterminds and how all like, like the, some of the smartest people ever, they're always connected to the, to the other smartest people ever. And when you get like-minded like energy, so to speak, or even bad ones too, is if you get the certain energies together and then that's mm. when you can start formulating like real, mm. real change and real thoughts. And, and it kind of makes sense. So it's like, that's why we need that shit. Like we that's need this, and, 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 and just, you know? And then, and, and then here's another thing I'm learning and I was telling mm. D, enthusiasm. Cause what I'm noticing is when you, when you listen to business people, motherfuckers talking about getting it, all of them have this, excitement about it so and like so they're like like that feel and i'm like wait i kind of feel that so it's like oh and they all talk this way and joey wouldn't you say when you're talking about this finance and you get like almost like a like a giddy like a oh, giddy yeah. feel yeah. right you can see i i'm i'm moving around in my chair the whole time doing <laughs> <laughs> getting this rich prior on you definitely do you get excited because that's a, you that's find- a terrible joke <laughs> <Sorry. Richard. laughs> all right go ahead Joe. I, I slipped that in there yeah yeah uh and I said, you, you get excited because you know you're it's like you've unlocked you know you we you and you and i talk with the, the level up you leveled up you unlock this new something you unlock whatever it is and you just get excited about it because yeah there's a little bit of unknown but you're but when the when you when you you know you grow up a little bit, you want to learn. Like we, you know, when you're younger, maybe you want to just live, have fun, but now we want to learn. We want to know everything about everything. So when you do that, the mind just kind of feeds off of that. And then mm-hmm. when you feed off of that, you do get excited. You get excited, you start talking about things that excites other people. And then that's when something like a mastermind comes back because everybody's on the same thing you're on. And, right. and I like I like what you mentioned too, Chris, about the masterminds and them being connected to other people who are masterminds and whatnot, because it it, it kind of makes me think about how how essential communication at its very core is like just by us three talking to each other we're creating a formulation of uh, of masterminds mm-hmm. somebody's going to watch this and gain knowledge like that's literal energy being passed on that's what, what the whole that's what the, do, that's what what the whole mean? book is about and it's kind of deep so well, the first oh, chapter goodness. was about the energies and, and how they were trying to prove <laughs> that wow that that's like deep. My, when like minds are together, and and if and if you break it down, and, and they were breaking it down where it's about energy, right? So that's why you have to that's have deep. these talks. You have to be around like minded people because that is when it gets. That's going to get the shit flowing. And I, I this shit had blew my mind because I'm like, that's kind of makes energetic, sense, bro. Yeah, that's crazy. It is, it, but you know what? A, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Can I go? Okay. So I always try to bring it back to like its complete opposite side, and Hitler always comes to my mind because what he was able to do is just crazy like as far as human history goes. So he, it was like an outsider's perspective, but he also allowed it a, like a lot of like-mindedness to happen within his own camp. Because I think it, I, I was looking at this statistic, but it took like, I probably get it wrong, but it took like, I'll say 150,000 working full-time Nazi uh, Germans to be working the system in order for that shit to run smoothly. And in order for the concentration kit shit to happen and all that stuff. So that means there's either 150,000 maniacs running around Germany right now just willing to kill somebody or they were super locked into a system in oh, which yeah. they were thinking. You know what I mean? So it was kind of like a deeper thought. Oh, oh my God, I was going crazy with it. But um, Well, it's, I'm glad you mentioned the word systems because I'm starting to learn that, that that's like what business is, right? I, 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 what I've been learning is what is just for finding ways to improve the system. Yeah. Like that's what business is at yeah. its core. It's, it's a system of things. Cause I, cause so when someone I'm trying to perfect my system, like I had a website, but before I had the website, my system didn't have a website. And then I got the website to try to improve the system. And then I'm gonna add things to the website to improve the experience, to improve the system. So like systems, like I'm like, and this is a thought process that I wouldn't have even like, like, like system. I don't, what the fuck is this? I, when I think of system, I think of Xbox 360, you know what I'm saying? That's what I think of systems, but it's like that, that, and I'm excited to hear these kind of things. Yeah, different connections. You're building different connections to your own energy that you created. Right. It's like, no, you oh my God, and then you're spreading those positive energy that you just mentioned, and then, and then oh my God, it's such a master class. Mm-hmm. It's a master class. When you, get, when you get into business, I'm starting to learn, you, you, were you excited, Chris, that excitement you talked about? You're tapping into something that's new that you've never tapped into before. It's like, when you tap into the mindset of a 90 year old, like we were talking about a hundred year old, or you tap into the mindset of a billionaire, 
it's mindsets a lot of people haven't thought about. So when, when you get into the ownership mindset, as far as it's, especially the way in which we've been learning it legally, you know what I mean? Right, right. You really get into like that makes you excited about getting into a new form of energy. And then there's so much energy and new shit out here for us to just get into. So I see you know that excitement. And, you, you're, talking and, about. and you're right, D, because it does. It, it literally feels like an energy. Like you feel like excited and you're like, whoa. Yeah. That's you're like, oh, man, like, I'm glad you said that. That really resonated with me when you said that. Preacher, man, go ahead. Yeah, he's he's keep going. <laughs> and, 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 that really resonated with me. <laughs> and, and another and another thing I've been kind of really on is uh and me and D talked about this maybe on the last podcast, Joey is is is, is paying for, for the info. Like I mm -hmm. and so I, I first of all, like let's say you ain't got no money, right? You're like, well, I ain't got money. Well, fine. YouTube university for hundred percent. Right. You, know, you, you gotta go to YouTube, like you're dumb if you don't. Yeah. But, but the the level up from that, so I'm, I'm gonna call it a level up. I won't say like the dip, but the level up is you gotta pay for knowledge, yeah, because yeah. you gotta get the skill. And now I'm like, oh, pay for the course, pay for the training, and that's how you did. Now you have that embedded, and then you can use that to, to grow your shit, and then you pay for. So some of these top motherfuckers, and it's funny that they all keep paying for trainings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, exactly, that's exactly how it was for me that's why you know i said i got kind of got back in the stocks I, okay so i was driving i was uh after the pandemic once i said my funds were getting low i was like i gotta do something gotta do something i started like doing like postmates uber lyft things like that picked up a dude one time uh dropped him off at some hotel on the strip and he was and we were talking a little bit we got to talking in a seven minute uber ride he was like listen man I'm getting real good energy. I'm catching, I'm, I'm feeling your vibe that we're, we, like, this is like, we're connecting right now. He was like, I'm gonna push you on. You said something about stock. I said something about like stocks, you know, related to whatever it was. Again, seven minute ride. He was like, you gotta follow this group. Follow this dude, Chris Johnson. You know, he's a part of this group called The Well Squad. Follow them and just, 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 just watch social media. He goes, they have a thing you can buy into. It's a $25 membership. It's a, it's an investment group. It's under, you know, $25. You can get a discord chat. You can learn. And I was like, all right, I'll watch the social media. I went like two, three months, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> went like two, three months, just watching this dude, just posting stuff, posting stuff. And all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute. You know, I'm, I like stocks. I'm actually about this. Like, let me like, let me dive in a little bit. Ended up signing up, became a member of the group dove in couldn't even follow the discord i was just navigating it just watching people chat and all this kind of stuff and then he was like listen you know everybody in the group you can get a discount if you want to take yourself to the next level you want to level up i got these courses there's a fee for the courses and at first i'm like man do i want to pay another 50 bucks for seven courses just to do am i interested in this and then i was something one day was just like do it just do it why would you not do it? 50 bucks, see what it is. And that right there, that 50 bucks was the best, well, plus the 25 that I spent the monthly, that was the best 50, 75 bucks I ever spent in my life because what it did was it, it made my brain level up. And then I focused and I wanted to learn. And then I learned about stocks. And now you know, that's exactly what it was. It, it, it takes, you mm. have to, you don't just get free learning like that. Like you can, some people might put you on game, but if you really want it, you have to invest in yourself first before you can go out and invest your money. And, you know, that's how you can build some wealth. But you got to invest in yourself or you don't do it. You're not going to, you're going to, you know, you're not going anywhere with it. Now, see, here's- and you got to make, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was say, now, here's what I've been learning and the reason why that worked, right? So I've been trying to learn, like, because what that comes down to is marketing, right? And how, the, how he was able. So you just told me the experience. You Somebody put you on and then you, you had the, he was like, there's a course and you could just hop into it right now, but- there's some free shit too. So you said, all right, well, let me look at the social media free shit. So, but you've been getting value this whole time. Mm -hmm. So that's why the motherfuckers who are really making money, especially in the digital and social media age, you, you get the, the value up front. Yeah. Get free, free game, get free game. That's how you get trust. You got mm -hmm. to be, so like, you don't really chase the bag. You chase the value to the people. Then the bag will chase you. Right. And that's kind of what I'm learning about marketing. It's, so like, for instance, how I'm going to use this with me is instead of saying, can y'all hear me? Yeah. 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 It's the, it, can y'all hear me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nothing changed. 
<laughs> it's not like he, uh, 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 can you hear me? Can you hear us? <laughs> yeah, here we go. Yeah, I'm back. How are you? Uh, circle back, circle back, circle back. Oh, so, oh, marketing. So for me, how I'm going to use it for me, instead of what I've been doing is saying, hey, here's a new shirt that I'm selling for so and so, so and dollars, right? Don't do that. That's not how you don't don't come out trying to give value up front. Offer free value up top mm -hmm. and then just throw the site and let you can buy a shirt if you like. But there's back to so don't lead with it. And if you and it kind of makes sense, because if you look at think about an Apple commercial, do they ever really talk about price? No, not really. You know what they do? They're selling the story. They're selling what kind of person would buy Apple. They're selling uh, like an or, like an idea. They, they're selling the like, Apple with a you know what I'm saying. But yeah. but and, and they don't come out like hey, so we got these new phones and these specs and it's dope. And that and why you think Apple's one of the biggest fucking companies in the mm -hmm. world? Is because they're coming out as like a trillion dollar company that's a millennial base style. Mm -hmm. Right. That's and, how they're coming off as. But as far as the market, because that's kind of what I'm on now, because I'm trying to learn how to market my brand, right? So I'm just trying to find ways. And what I'm learning is, is you got to offer the value and or paint the picture of the kind of person who would wear your product. You see what I'm saying? So 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 what I'm learning is for the because I got a lot of people. Like, I'm, I'm I'm over a thousand items sold now, you know, so it's actually becoming Woo! a thing. I know. Right. It's crazy. Since November and, and 90, 90 percent of that was was no website that was all by hand mm -hmm. Love but anyways you for that one. so yeah. but I, thank you but what i'm trying to do is figure out what kind of person buys like invest in cares none you see what i'm saying so let me ask you joey mm -hmm. just for just for, for my just to help me why did you choose to support me I mean, you, you did send in a, you know, in a message today, why other than the fact that, you know, we're boys, but like knowing you being around you, yes, I want to support you because one is you. Two, I, I know the meaning behind cares now. I knew it before it became a thing because we were boys. We kicked it. Right. Um, honestly, I, I, I got this shirt because I like the, I like the style of the shirt. Is that, that's, that's your shirt? <laughs> I, I, saw, I, saw, I saw the pastel. Put it down for you. I saw I saw the pastel and I, I love the pastel. So I mean, some of some of what you're creating is is good quality stuff. I mean, all the way you're creating is great. Some of the stuff is really eye catching, eye popping. That's why I was like, I need to have certain things. But I mean, knowing your backstory, knowing everything, knowing how you are the kind of person that you are, what you know cares none, the meaning behind it is, it was it was it wasn't even like it wasn't even like a thought. I was just like. I want to. I want to support. I want to support you. I want to support the brand because the brand has a, a meaning that a lot of people, you know, cares none. They're like cares none. It gets you thinking. What's it gets you thinking. <laughs> it does. And then, and then you tell people That's what, what you talked about. You know what you you said. You tell people cares none is, and then they're like, well, shit. I want to be a part of. I want. Yeah, I, I cares none too. I want to be cares none too. So, <laughs> right, right, right. So all that. Um, man, that's, you know, that's why I decided to definitely, definitely support the game and. uh and I, and I'm gonna keep supporting the game. So, well, and, and here's mm -hmm. why I brought that up is because I feel like I, I, I was to me anyone could wear it technically, but when when you're trying to market something, they all everyone says you have to you have to find your target audience, and it's just like well, anyone could benefit from you know following your you know what I'm saying like who on earth. So I'm trying to find a way to break it down even more detailed because they everyone is so it's I can't just say, well, mine's good for everybody when everyone who's ever done this says you have to find it. So like I'm still trying to figure out exactly who is the person who would buy it to try to improve my shit. And mm -hmm. I, I, I'm I'm thinking like the like a mode like a motivated person. You know, yeah. that's kind of what I'm leaning for someone who's like either right there or wants to be right there or who is there. But like, if you were just like an unmotivated person, I don't know if you'd fuck with it. And I, mm -hmm. again, I'm just I'm just brainstorming. I need y'all help because I'm trying to figure that shit out. You know? I yeah, yeah, saying. for sure. I definitely, I definitely think that. Yeah, I mean, the person that's the person that's motivated, the person that's you know ready to you know they're fueling everything's fueling and they just they want something to kind of break out and go. That's what I think the brand would definitely be tailored for. But I mean. I don't know. It's like how, how, how they, the people that they're going to find the brand, the people that it's like the same, the same mindset behind 
cares none are the same people that are going to find the brand because those are the people that are looking for something different, looking for something that's going to kind of take them to the next level or, you know, whatever it may be in that kind of sense. But I feel like, yeah, that's, 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 that's it. That's kind of what I feel like it is. Yeah. And Chris, are you, I have a question for you. Are you trying to, as a, as the brand owner at this time, because we talked about how the brand is your baby. Are you trying to control its boyfriend, so to speak? No, I'm just trying to Are you like trying to shape it. Well, I, I am kind of shape it, and and for for the reasons of being able to target a specific audience, and then having the message down, and and then so I, I want I want to kind of know so 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 to me cares not, but it, I guess Steve brought this up because it can mean something different to everyone, but to me the owner of it cares <laughs> none, and it's changed over the years. So if I'm so I'm not gonna stunt. And when I first started, I was just kind of like. Oh, like, fuck you, cares none. It was more of like just being an asshole. But then as I became more, as I became more self-developmental, it was more of like a cares none mm -hmm. to that shit that was keeping me from doing it. Or, you know, and all the fears, or even like if I was talking to a girl or how, how to respond to a girl, it's like, you know what? Have the balls and courage, cares none to, the, to that fear. So that's kind of what I'm, it's like, a, to me, it's a self-permission to do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with the intention to do the right thing obviously so that's kind of where that's where the be dope part comes in you know like just be dope it be and to me it's like be the best version of yourself so so thank mm -hmm. y'all for for helping me with the, you know and, and here's the thing because i want to i want to target think about, so with, with facebook ads so here's what i'm i'm telling this is what i've been focusing on me and d been on this heavy dude joey maybe you don't know this or not facebook ads is how you get wealthy too Mm -hmm. I love these different and, industries, man. And, and, what, and whatever business, though, and, and whatever business you do, so it's not, it's because you can, talk, whatever you're, let's say you are a barber, you can use the Facebook ads and target everyone specifically in the specific area that makes a specific, so you can like literally make them see it. Yeah. So like you can put your ad, whatever you need to add for, whether it be real estate or whatever, and you can put it specifically into the specific person. Let's say you, you have Rolex watches. And so you sell, how about not Rolex? You sell high quality watches. Mm -hmm. So then you could go on Facebook ads and then target people who like things like, let's say, uh, Rolex or all those brands, or let's say just high quality shit, let's say Range Rovers. So you can, you can target people who like this shit because those would be the people who would probably like a nice watch right mm -hmm. and then not only that let's say you make expensive nice watches so you want to kind of filter out the motherfuckers who ain't got the money to do it so then you can also put in the people who like range rover the people who like rolex that also make above 75k a year and that's how vicious you can pinpoint the ad damn i know it's like that it's precise. yeah no yeah. dude it's 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 pinpoint to the t and uh -huh. you can get it and you, and you can get like women it's crazy and then and check this out, Joe. Here's where it gets even more sick. <laughs> so the algorithm knows everything about us, right? They, they, they perfect. They know everything about us. Mm -hmm. So they know who you are. And they can say person A is like, is like Joey or like 52% like Joey, 98% like Joey. And so there's people out there clearly that have same similar interests as you, right? Right. So the people who go to your site and order something from your site, you can get the information from those people, people who buy. So now you have, okay, person A has all these interests and he bought your product. And then mm -hmm. you can make what's called a lookalike group and then target all the people who are just like person A who just bought. So then you can literally get your product in front of everyone who is just like the people who have already bought your shit. And then, so, and this is what I'm learning because I'm taking this course now. I had to see going to circle back. I, I paid for this course to even hey. know that knowledge. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't just know that. And, and, and no one's really giving that for free. I, I guess you can probably go on YouTube and find it, but they don't like break it down. It's clean. You right, gotta filter sure. out the bullshit. And you can do it, but it ain't all set up right there for you, ready to go. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure with the Chris Jones, I'm sure a lot of shit you're learning, but he probably puts it all nice right there. Boom, boom. And mm -hmm. another, mm -hmm. and is it like a, with the Chris Jones thing with the squat? It's a bunch of other motherfuckers too, right? 30,000 people now, man. It's crazy. And it, it, it ballooned. So when I first joined, he was like, cause I've been, I said, I've been looking at it for a little bit. He was like for the next, you know, until we hit like 3000 members. And this was like January until we hit 3000 members, 
it's going to be 25 bucks a person. Once 3,000 members, it's going to go up. January, we're at 30,000 members of this group now because of marketing. I'm assuming things like that, getting in touch with people and it reaching so many people, so many people talking well, about this. So you know what they, so I'm, I'm learning now. So what he just did by saying, hey, up until that, so what he did, what he just did was create scarcity, right? So when yeah. you create scarcity, yeah. people get like, oh shit, I got to put on. Wouldn't you say you got, we all get hit by it because you don't want to miss out. You get, you definitely get hit by it, but I'm not gonna lie. That was like the second or third time I saw that he had put something like that. And there was a part of me that was like, I know yeah. stocks. Do I want to like, it, it, it was definitely back and forth. I was weighing what I wanted to do with it. And then finally he was like, it, it, what that like third time I saw it, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. And I, and I did it. And it, I'm so glad that I did it. And if more people had that same kind of mindset, go for the, the learnings, the teaching, you got to mm. understand the knowledge. If you don't understand, mm. if you don't understand what you're doing, <laughs> you're going to be talking to a wall the rest of your life type of type of mindset. Yeah. So, yeah. That's been my word. My word lately has been mentorship. I've been really trying to just find different mentorship and really understanding that concept. We, it kind of rolls back to a concept we mentioned the other day, um, which was about having parents, like, like the hundred year old people, they were how, uh, advising us to always have parents or choose your parents or something like choose that. Choose your parents. So I, said. Yeah. Choose your parents. So I would just think of mentorship, like choosing your parents, choose the people you're going to gain that knowledge from. You're going to soak up shit from. So, but always be, mm -hmm in that mindset of I'm, I want to soak up, you right, know, right. just natural growth. So yeah, yeah. that resonates. Well, and, and you know, and we'll wrap it up soon here, but I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a bastardized this quote, but the quote said something on the lines of once, once you see a, a way of thinking is really hard to go back, mm -hmm. you know, cause it's, it's almost like you ever see the matrix, like y'all have both seen the matrix part one. Yeah. Where yeah. It, where uh, Morpheus was like, hey, you got the blue pill and you got the red pill. If you get take the blue pill, everything will go back to where it was. But if you take the red pill, all I can do is just show you a whole new way. And But that's all. We can't promise you nothing else, right? And I feel like I'm the kind of person who likes that red pill. I want to see, like, what's over there. Yeah, right. Like, I'm not scared mm -hmm. of that. Mm -mm. But it is unknown. Like, when, when, when you open up your world and, you know what I'm saying? Like, even, like for instance, to get yourself an own business, like, that's a risk, you know, and think the government yeah. was helping, but that's going to stop. So now it's all on me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah but yeah. that's a red pill. And personally, I kind of like that. Ooh, that, that, that was giving me the fire because I'm like, and then it's like, it's almost like it forced me to start looking for the answers. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And what I think and what I've been trying to do and, and after reading this book, I've been, and I didn't even realize what we was doing it. You was doing it too. It's trying to create that mastermind scenario because that's the that's the fastest way to get all of us to get to get where we want to go. Yeah. Is to get other like my, that's why all these groups and squads and shit that's why they work. And and to go back, let me circle back. Oh, we'll get cold. Hey. <laughs> get cold. Yeah, I'm proud um, of it. A lot of times what's cool about these these courses and shit like that and these in these groups is you get the networking with the other people who are yeah. like-minded individuals. Mm -hmm. So in the squad thing, can you just chat with everybody? Like you just chime in and yeah, they got you. I mean, there's different parts of it too. So, I mean, you got you do real estate stocks in there. Um, they got branding, they got marketing, things like that. You can sit down, you can learn different things. Um, it's, 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 it's really dope, man. I mean, not everybody, you can see the amount of people that are always in, and I never really see more than three, four thousand people ever logged in at one time. So, 30, it reached 30,000 people, it, it convinced 30,000 people to buy in, but there's about 10% of that that are actually tapping in all the time. And I, I tap in daily now. Um, right now, I said, I'm, I'm big into the knowledge part of it. So I'm really trying to fully understand and, you know, seeing what this person says and then someone comments and then you build a thread and you're, you're just learning from everybody. But yeah, you, mm. can, you can tap. Communication. Yeah, it, it's, 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 that's what it is. It's communication and it's, it's positivity, the GVO shit. Like, that that's what it is across the board. You can't you can't you can't come up with that negative action, negative mindset, and expect to get results. It, it'd be a winner, right? Yeah. Yeah. You you got you know they you know patience. Patience is the thing. You know, to learn, get that understanding, get the value from everything that you're putting. You know, you're investing in, and you're gonna see. It. You're just you're, you're just gonna see. It. You're gonna like it, the only thing I can relate to right now with you know what we're talking about is I learned a bunch of stuff that I didn't know before. And then after taking a couple of different courses, 
watching, you know, reading people, someone said something that was similar to what I wanted to learn and understand, and it just it created a thread. Learn all that over the weekend, came into a trade, it's like two weeks ago, came into it, you know, Monday morning and made a trade, made a good little bit of coin that Monday morning, and I was just like, oh shit, like I could do this, like it's, it's that easy, like you, you just, I just learned, I just invested in myself, I learned, I took the knowledge, and I put it into play, and the shit worked. And it should work, yeah. And you invested in thyself, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, and then and that's where you got the belief. Like with me, when I sold my first article of clothing, and and I sold a few, and then I remember I'll never forget. I it, it was really hard for me. I'm like, damn, like I'm it, people actually buying something that uh, that I represent, mm -hmm. and and it was a weird thought, and and I and I couldn't figure it out. And me and D talked about it, you know, doing the wing review. And I'm just like, that, that shit was really, that was my like aha moment. Like, damn, nigga, did you, you know, like, you like, what, like what, is, is this, is this what we talking about? And then I didn't realize that I was like, and the fact that I don't mind putting like literally 14 hours of just knowledge into it. That's how I yeah. know it's, it's for real. Man, it's, it, it's, it's your game tapes, man. And I, I, we talked about this before, you know, after the fact, but it was for me and you'll know what I'm talking about. I say, but it was Kobe. I was never. Oh. I was never a Kobe Bryant fan. In fact, I would tell you I didn't like him. I didn't like the Lakers. But guess who I fucking learned the most from ever? Kobe Bryant. Because isn't that crazy? I, like I did. I, I wasn't a fan of him. Would but I would watch him endlessly, and that's when I started getting really good at basketball. It was actually post college because I started studying and watching and the footwork and and every little thing. And and, and you know why I watched him is because. He took the time. I knew he was someone that was just phenomenal. And he took the time to make, get himself there, but he studied the game tapes. You know, the, the best people are the ones that are in the gym. They're in the gym. Whatever in the gym is for you, that, that's yeah. learning, that's studying, that's reading. Whatever you have to do to get in the gym, get yourself in the gym. You know, now if, if it's not something, you know, physically in the gym, our in the gym is our study time, our is our learning time, and that's what it, that's what it's become now, and that's how we are going to become better at what we do, and that's how we will ultimately, in in terms of stocks, will create wealth and generational wealth and things like that, and we're able to provide for our families. It don't matter, but you got yeah, having a mommy mentality about it. Yeah, now, mommy like, mentality. Like, like for those people who weren't very like, uh, I wasn't really big into learning, you know. Like <laughs> I just I like. If I gave a fuck about the topic, you know, but I guess what I'm trying to say is for those people who like might be on the fence about, man, I want to try something, but I don't want to learn like the learning curve to learn. Something does take some energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're going to have to sit down and, and you're going to have to put that time in and you're just going to have to do it. And there's going to be some parts of even your dream that you might not necessarily give a fuck about, but it's part of your dreams in order for you to get it popping. For instance, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not that keen on editing videos personally, mm -hmm. but I, but, but I know I want to create a fucking, you know, empire of shit. And that's going to be part of it by myself right now. Right. One day I'll get to a point where I can pay someone else to do that shit. But cause I, you know what I'm saying? Someone else who wants to edit, but you're going to have to go through those feelings of, all right, sit down, get it in. And then I'm telling y'all, this is what's going to happen. You just put that time in. Put that time, just put it in. And then when you learn some shit and then you implement, so don't just learn it, implement it, right? And then when you start to see the fruits of your labor, then that's when it's Ooh. like, whoa. When you start to see shit that you put time in, mm -hmm. you start implementing, and then you see return on investment, whatever it is you're doing, that's when the click happens. Yeah, and then you just want to keep doing that because you'd be stupid not to. Yeah, right. Like you have to fall in love with the entire process. And that's, that's the big, especially, especially young, young people coming up that they don't understand. I didn't understand it when I was, you know, I really just to basketball. I want I just wanted the game. I just want, I just want to play the game. Let me go and drop my little 30 piece really quick. I want the game, but I, you know, I, there was a point where it took me a long time. I didn't want to do the practice. I didn't want to go to practice. You know, practice. everybody, Everybody jokes about AI, he does, you know, the practice. <laughs> Nobody wants to fall in love with it. Nobody wants to do the, you know, yeah. the part of it. And that's where a lot of people fail. And that's why there's, you know, only the best of the best make it to the top. The best of the best mm -hmm. are the ones that 
They did all the behind the scenes work. They they put all the hours in. They did all the whether it's training, the studying, whatever it may be. No, they, they never stopped. They never stopped. Never stopped. You fall in love with the entire process. Don't just process. Fall, don't fall in love with you know what's at the top. You gotta you gotta fall in love with everything from the bottom to the top, and you gotta love every part of that, and and dedicate yourself to that entire process. You and gotta trick the, your mind into loving the fuck ups. Yeah. Well, and, and here's and that's a fact. Oh yeah. Oh god, that's so true. I mean, let me let me let me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna forget about the one point because that was so good. What I'm learning <laughs> is the fuck ups are really your friend because I'm now you have just learned a way not to do it. So it's like, just as clutch. Yeah. You, yeah. You Absolutely. just won. So not because you, you're not gonna <laughs> make them. And let's be honest, you learn you learn very well when you didn't fuck some shit up. Like Joey, oh, yes, you did. learned you learned learn about that that uh cert, that day trader shit, didn't you? Yeah, real quick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. That's why I was on that real shit. You know, yeah. so when you make a jag, or like for instance, me with if I'm doing something I make and I like press the wrong shirt and I'm like, fuck, that's a quick way to learn. So but I don't look at it as like like I don't necessarily stay away from it. Don't get me wrong, you want to make the good decisions and try not to make many mistakes, but mm -hmm. when you do make one. It's, it's it's literally passive because oh okay all right that's one way hopefully you don't make catastrophic mistakes but even in that situation because i think in a so even if you lose everything right even if you're in a situation where you lose everything if you can try to get this abundance mindset you're going to mm -hmm. still figure it out and mind you going back to the original point i'm on one right now hey. <laughs> when you get when you pay for that knowledge even if something bad happens you still have that knowledge mm-hmm mm-hmm yeah. You can still use that. You can. So once you learn it, you you know it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you can use that, you know. So, like for me personally, I I I'm mean, I'm gonna use the, the fact that if you learn, and I've just heard a few people say this, if you learn how to use the Facebook ads, because at the end of the day, attention is where the money's at. Right? Mm -hmm. Why do you spend all this money, the attention? I think the Super Bowl gets the most expensive the commercials are a billion dollars or whatever. It's just because all the eyes, right? That's why right. That's why social media is huge, why you got to get your number up because attention is king. So if you can figure out the attention, no matter it is, whatever you do, whether it be stock, or I don't know about stocks might be the different one, but even in that too, you can you can manipulate by putting attention on the wrong thing. So even, even in that situation, attention is key. If you can figure out how to get whatever the fuck you fucking with in front of the correct eyes, that is how you are successful with wealth. Communication, no matter what yeah. you do. So for instance, let's say, even like in any in any scalabilities, let's say you uh you're at the gym, right? Or you own a gym, you own a local gym, and you need you need so you have a storefront and you need people to get, get memberships. Mm -hmm. If you can target all the people who want to go to a gym in the, the 25 mile radius or whatever, you have to get get your shit in front of their eyes. And so that's what it, so that's if you can pay for the advert, like if you can figure out how the, the marketing of anything. That's I'm like, oh, so the marketing is like the key to all business, bro. Because people mm -hmm. need to see your shit. People need to see yeah. your shit in order, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The visual it, is if, the biggest form of communication that we have. It's big over hearing, over everything else. It's, it's like people want to see more than they want to do anything. Agreed. For facts. Yeah. And that's a whole business. That's a whole marketing tool and whatnot. Yeah, it's true. And, 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 and it's just kind of, I'm telling you, man, I just, wow. I just saw, I just read this ad the other day, uh, not an ad, a, um, a website that tells you like your Instagram score. And I'm supposed to be like, they break it down. I don't know the formula how, but I should be making like $200 off a post. Mm. They was like, it's between 180 and 210 or something like because mm -hmm. they break it down. You know what I'm saying? It's like, now I don't know what that means. Like, cause I know Instagram don't pay you, but I think they're going by based on the formula that whether it be paying for influencer ads or whatever, I should be making on average 200 bucks per post. Yeah, right. Um, so, and, my, and the only reason why is because I have attention. Attention is the key to all yes. things, man. <laughs> it's funny <laughs> how we translated attention into the internet age and it's literally about the eyes. It's, it's about the eyes you can put on something. When you click on a YouTube video, so it's about how many clicks can it get? How much attention can somebody see for at least 15 seconds? Perfect, yep. Yeah, wow. and, and then like, how good does it get to get attention, right? A month you get your fifteen hours or fifteen minutes of fame. People, that shit feels mm -hmm, good. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? How long can you get it? Or yeah. check this out to get break it down before we Not get out of here. Shit. Women love attention. When you don't give it to them, they want it more, right? So that's how important that attention shit is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Is, so it's, it's like attention so, is primal for sure. 
it's a fucking thing. But uh, all right, Joey, man, do you, you want to shout out some Instagrams or anything like that? You want to let people know or you don't give a fuck about all that life? Oh, uh, man, my Instagram is like underscore. You got to do underscore J underscore O all the way to Joey. <laughs> seven. I don't make it easy. I, I didn't make it easy for her, but uh, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, that's I, I mean, I, I've been shouting out Well Squad the whole time because they changed my whole point of view on a lot of things. So I'm gonna shout Well Squad out one more time. Chris Johnson, you know, that's 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 a good group. People that watch, and if you're really into stocks, go follow, make the decision. It'll be the best choice you ever made. You're gonna learn to how you're gonna learn. So that's you're gonna learn today. You're gonna learn today. <laughs> hey, D, uh, <laughs> shout out your shit, man. Yeah, actually, really quick, I want to shout out myself. So I um, actually had an interview today with this uh, company called The Film Connection and had an hour and a half talk uh, today. And I'm going to be a part of this group where I'm going to be able to work in apprenticeship at a, an actual film production studio. So you. I'll actually, yeah, I'll actually, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll actually be working back a house. And this is what I want to kind of leave with. We talked about masterminds and look what, Chris mentioned he doesn't necessarily want to be on the editing side of things so my brother I can provide that for him I can provide those connections you know what I mean this is him him working this e-commerce side and him really mm -hmm. getting into that that's so special for us you know what I'm saying as brand builders as well and for me to be able to work this side this is like a this is mastermind this is how shit works so when we say Joey we want more people around like Nigga, putting in the pot with this shit we are serious. Like I'm, we're actively investing and in putting that, like I said, mentorship into play. I'm doing a full on six month apprenticeship, investing my money, investing my time, investing everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I just want to leave with that just to show people like how mastermind, how the art of mastermind is working from the ground up and us just literally mentoring ourselves and making our investments and putting those together with each other in mind. So. And mm -hmm. you know what, Joey, yeah. you should you should strongly and I, I mean, it's from the bottom of my heart. And yeah. I, I think it would benefit you greatly, especially with this new profoundness is to consider your own personal brand, bro. For sure. I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm telling developing you. it, but not not just starting it, but developing yeah, it, thinking about it. it because it's your person, you know what I'm saying? But it, it's it, you, it's you, it's that's your, what the brand it's your is. person. And because mm -hmm. you're self-developing, it's going to. Right. But you need mm -hmm. to consider a personal brand and put it out there because I'm telling you, one, you're the most genuine motherfucker I've ever met. So anyone who they're going to fuck with you just based off of, because at the end of the day, people buy shit from people they like. That's, that's a fact, right? So yeah. you should consider it, bro, especially because you're about to start making money. That's that's going to happen. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. for, we all are, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you should really constrain and consider that, man. And I think that that's where I'm going to get really big into because I'm, what, what really tickles my fancy is the marketing side. Yeah, like more, more than like as far as all this, because you know, I, I do all of my own shit, right? But more mm -hmm. than the editing, even sometimes more than the fucking, even more than the content creating, <laughs> sometimes I love figuring out the psyches of humans and, and how to, and, and then understanding what makes them tick and what makes them buy. Like, I'm mm -hmm. starting to really like like that part, yeah, you know, and, and yeah. that kind the of, art of human. advertisement too, but marketing. <laughs> so and it just, I just a guy who and you can run ideas by me. Somebody asked me the other day, like, how do I start my own brand? And I just, and I actually mm. really enjoyed talking to him about that. You know what I'm saying? And then me and D talked about it on the last podcast, and I really enjoyed talking about brands, you know? So, yeah. honestly, process. That's why you fell in love with the process. And now you, now yep. you, man, you fell in love. Look at you, Chris. Look at you, Chris. <laughs> he sure did. He said, I, I don't even <laughs> like other shit no more. Fuck out of here. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, no, like real talk. And it's just, uh, and it's funny. And, 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 and the hard times, and, and like I said, we definitely wrap this up now, but those hard times that, that you're going to have, no matter what the fuck you do, mm -hmm. that's okay because pressure turns coal into diamonds. Yeah. I had to go through that yeah. shit in order to have some dope shit. Like it ain't going to be yeah. easy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Damn. There's Damn. going to be, there's going to be moments that suck. Period. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't, you know, but at yep. least, at least these moments that suck are still on a trajectory of you building your shit. Whereas opposed to, mm -hmm. they're going, so they're going to suck regardless, right? Either they're going to suck and you know where they're sucking because you're trying something or they're going to suck because you ain't doing shit and your life sucks. So pick mm. the suck that can potentially pick cut the suck you. That, right. Mama. You get to choose your suck. So choose right. the, the suck that's going to lead to more better. Right. You know? So right. this is kind of right. where I'm at, man. And, uh, and I, I got you. I'm telling you, I'm I'm high on life right now, brother. And I'm kind of high yes, on marijuana, yeah. too. But. <laughs> Respectfully. All right. Uh, so, shout out there. 
uh, PCAProductions.com. You can find all of my equipment on there. You can find music. You can find my artwork. You can find my new apparel. Pretty cool. Apes apparel. Yeah, that shit is kind of Got fresh. that coming out. Yeah. I, I, thank, yeah. you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I appreciate uh, you, Chris, for the recommendation <laughs> on that. Um, so I actually just got my first three orders today. So they're actually, I got these on sale now. Uh, so you got them uh, on the site? Things, I got them on the site, but they're actually, I just got a, I'm getting a renewal going on. I'm actually getting an upgrade, the ultimate package. So I'm about to actually remodel it, but I'm actually, you know, I'm still taking in shit okay. as we go. You know, we, we get money at any way, shape or form. So right. business as usual. So you yeah, PCAProductions.com find- uh-huh. though. You can find me at uh, CaresNone.com. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, all, my, all my socials, all my uh, anything, all my social media, merchandise, whatever you want, hit me up, uh, email me something personal, man. I respond to all my people's mm-hmm. what today's was all about, and uh, I want to say thank y'all. And as always, Woo-woo! here's not yeah, yeah, yeah. digger. <laughs> right, hey, thanks for doing that, Joey, man. No, nah, I appreciate having y'all, man. Well, I, I, you know, we, we had mentioned it a minute back, so I definitely was uh, looking for you. Said it, and I was like, yes, yes, and then I was, yeah, I, I was messaging. I was like, shit, I think I got a closing, but I don't know for sure. So I just want to make sure it wasn't late because sometimes I'm having them late closings. I got to go to, so but it was good. So it worked out perfect. That's dope. Well, That's I dope. know. I'm. 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 Uh, hold on. Let me just. Yeah, make sure it's all good. Make sure no, it's all no, good. No, no, no. We're we're definitely good. No. Um, what I'm I was gonna say is um. I wanted to make sure to get you involved and I kind of would like to get you on more often, you know, because I, I just, again, I want to be surrounded with people who are going forward, man. And, 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 mm-hmm. and, and when you, and when you realize that not everyone's on that shit, you yeah. know, everyone's just kind of on that, you know, and it's cool. Do you, but I can't be around that man. Or how about this? I need yeah. to be around that as least as possible. Agreed. You know, I, Agreed. I want to be in, I want to be in rooms where like motherfuckers is getting it, you know what I'm saying? Because you just feed that energy, which goes into, uh, we just talked about it, but that mastermind shit, man, mm-hmm. and I didn't realize, and that's when all the shit starts popping. Cause this, this energy right here, this change of energy, we're just going to re- like recycle this for each other. Yep. Right. It, and then there's going to be moments where, where I might be slipping and y'all have to hit me up or you might be slipping. And then and I, we just have to like almost like a brotherhood of just list, of dopeness. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just holding each other. Just sometimes. Just, hey, what's going on, bro? bro? What's, what you got going on over there? You know, yeah. I have an aunt right now that's opening up. a. She's opening up a coffee shop and whatnot. She says, nephew, just the fact that you. Hey, auntie, good morning. What's 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 going on with the business? What you what's got what's going, what you got going on today? And not anything pressurous, but just saying, what's up? Hey, yeah. how you doing? Good to hear you. You know what I'm saying? Keep shit going on. So just even creating that simple brotherhood communication. I think today's topic has been masterminds and communication. And like just really opening up that platform and really understanding that that could be a real giant energy movement that we can really tap into, you know, yeah. like collectively. So I, mean, nah, I agree. And what we could do, shit, like, and again, because because it's so important, if you know anybody else who's like, and listen, not know like, yeah, cause you know when people are bullshit, man. Like, you, are you ready? You, yeah, we, you, yeah, you can yeah, feel it. It happens. It happens. If they're not on their shit, you know. But if you like come across someone who's like, you know what, my guy, he's 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 on that. Bring him in his group. We'll get four niggas in here. We'll get five, and then we'll just wrap it up. And then maybe one day we could turn that into some some type of brotherhood group of you know what i'm saying of just network entrepreneurial oh i can see that being like a business group everybody on their zooms and shit your mom was just telling me today she was about to do something with uh all the business owners she actually brought that up too so I, she might even get oh it. yeah and i didn't even think about that she literally told me about something like that today but you just get all kind of different people just together just growing that's why something like the the health squad the wealth squad like that shit is valuable mm-hmm. that's how that shit so we can maybe start our we can why can't why can't we start our own shit we could. we could everybody that's I, I guarantee that's how they they spun it they they started with a few people like this five you know yep. five full of people and exactly what you're saying it spun off to they got i don't know seven eight different sections and they got like a, a person that is the moderator for that whole section so it's like yeah mm-hmm. there's no reason why we couldn't do something like that other people doing it fuck hey hey we starting it yeah, I'm about to say, why not? Yeah, yeah why well, not? this is started. Why not? Yeah. Kind of, look, Chris, this is right on the trajectory where we probably were going to go anyway. Look what we were watching the um, the two financial shows that we've been really hopping into. You know uh, what uh, I mean? Sh- and shout out to Earn Your Leisure and Social Proof. Hey, Joey, check those out, man. 
What is Ooh. it? Let me, let me, let me write these down. So yeah, there's two dope ass podcasts, Deep. man. Um, Deep. One's Go called Good Knowledge. One's called Earn Your Leisure. Earn Your Leisure. Earn. Yeah, earn, and earn your leisure. And the cool thing, about that, cool thing about that pot, and then you can go back, they've had some killers on there, like Mark Cuban, fucking, mm -hmm. it's these two young brothers, and I know you, and, it's, and actually, we actually might keep this on the podcast, fuck it, because this is good knowledge. Um, How do you feel about hearing it, like people talk like you that are teaching you the shit? Yeah, of course. Right? Yeah. It feels different. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to like some you know some guy who went to the store. I did, I did, if you did the voice, I did this. I like, that up. Yeah. If you diversify your you know your, your portfolio. Well, back in my day, you yeah. know. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but but when you got a guy like Joe, this is what you got to do. And for some reason, that shit registers with me, and they talk. They know what they're talking about because niggas like that, uh, Mark Cuban are on his show. You're billionaires on this nigga show, right? So I'm like, there's yeah. a social proof, which yeah. is a segue to the other fucking podcast it's called social proof and this guy literally he just gets mm -hmm. business minds on and the whole social proof is he gets people who have actually done it it's called social proof people who have okay. actually done it and it's out there and they killing it and everything on here is killing it all his guests are killing it and he's killing it but it's like it's a learning experience and the whole point of this podcast is to <laughs> it just says earn your I, oh you sent it yeah, yeah, so, so it's like track it. yeah. the whole point of this podcast is he's trying to give gems to people. Mm -hmm. So okay. like they're literally giving like fucking gold nuggets, like gold, mm -hmm. pure uh, D. Am I lying? Not at all. We've been watching them. Great These are nuggets, too. like life changing nuggets, bro. Gems, yeah. But, and which makes sense, and and they're honest about it because they because what you do is you give the nuggets up front. Yeah. These people start changing his life, so then when they come with the real detailed help. Just like with you, I bet let you keep killing it. And then Wealth Squad's like, hey, man, we got some real shit. Literally a game changer, but five grand, though. But it's a game changer. You're going to consider right. it. Yeah. Right. You're going to consider it, especially if you didn't make 25 grand. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, we're going to flip that. One of the niggas I was watching literally said he made $30,000 one month and put $30,000 back into fucking like mentor type learning situations mm -hmm. while he was still broke. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a mindset he, right there. He baby. believed in, and it makes sense. Why would you not pay? I wish I would have thought like this in the past, but why would you not pay to be mm -hmm. in the room of the smartest people? Because look at us trying to start our own shit because of how hard it is to be connected to those fucking people. Right. Mm. To, yeah. And not even just like-minded people. So now you're talking about people who have actually made it further than you. You know what I'm saying? So they actually know, at least with us. So we're like learning together, which is still fire because you need that. But then when you pay for these courses, these niggas didn't pave the way. D always says, I'm not, I'm trying to work smarter, not harder. Yep, always. That's my that's my motto. Like, why would so why would you not pay for that? I, I was and like if, mm -hmm. you, if you got the money, you know what I'm saying? And at the, you know, I, I forgot where I heard it once when nigga was like, um, you could tell when someone's serious when they pay for the course. And I'm and, and at first I was like, eh, but mm. now I kind of get that. Yeah. Yeah. When mm. you when you paint, like, because it's an investment, especially when it's something cheap, like $25. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Or you know, mm -hmm. months. We was talking about uh, me and D was talking yesterday about there's this one uh, the uh, the social proof podcast. He has yeah. a group every morning they meet and it's all entrepreneurs every morning at eight thirty. You get to try it out. Look at me giving him a shout out, right? Uh, hey. hey, but hey, fuck it, that's a gym, right? But because somebody else, might, and I'm gonna do it too. One dollar to just try it out. One dollar, no obligation. Get out seven days. You just be part of this phone call. Every morning, I don't know if it's an hour or two. I don't really know the details, but I just remember the principle. And it's just like-minded individuals. And I okay. think it's, you know, like a well squad probably kind of thing. But I think it's all entrepreneurs, right? Mm -hmm. And then after that, it's $75 a month. And the old me would have been like, man, that's a big jump. But it's like, is that, is that really that expensive for that amount of, of, of one, knowledge, but two, just the networking? Mm -hmm. think right. about the connections that you're going to meet in that squad so like $75 to me is actually cheap in that situation no yeah. it's super cheap it's super right. cheap for what they're selling that knowledge for but but to me that, that, that there's a mindset though you see you have to shift because you might be like oh I ain't got the rent you know what I'm saying listen if you can't afford it you cannot afford it but if you can or if you can find a way mm -hmm. my new psyche is like you gotta pay for that shit you gotta, you gotta do mm -hmm. it yeah you literally gotta do it like that's a like I, I did. I joined Well Squad first. 
um, bought the dues courses second, went through a couple of the courses, you know, got a few more still that I haven't quite gone through yet, but because they talk about like real estate and different things that I'm not quite focused on yet, but um, other people in the group, some dude came on and he made his own course for options. Didn't even think about it because I already invested in the other stuff, bought his course too. Another girl came up who she'd been killing it in options, bought her course instantly. Another dude came up. They got different things. Like I almost, I almost have to like stop myself in a sense from buying because I'm so addicted to the learning aspect of it now that every, anytime someone presents a good, like a good yeah, learning. But, no, but wait, why are you stopping yourself from doing that? This is financial. Oh, no, 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 because like if someone's presenting something and I'm just buying it. I'm just buying it. I'm just, I'm just buying because I'm buying to learn because I just want that knowledge. I want to, I want to just, I, I literally. Yeah, want, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I know. I what don't you want. Mean. I don't want to miss an you opportunity. Over one, yeah. Like I don't want to miss the opportunity to, you know, maybe this person because not everybody teaches the same exact thing. So right. What's, the, what's it? That this sure. person doesn't say something different. This person says something different. This person. Now all of a sudden, yeah. I, I hit them all. And now I know three different things. Now I got three different things to. And then, and then you can mold it your own the way that works best for you out of all three of them. For my own adventure, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Yeah. Be everybody, but they're they're do they're winning. They're doing this shit right. They're making money. They're working their shit for you. Well, I'm gonna take what the, what he did, what she did, what he did, and yep. now so yep. I know exactly what I'm looking for. And all portfolio, sudden, you're creating a portfolio. Yeah, you're just like shit. Everything is opened up. You're like, wait a minute. Now here's the thing, though, and now you gotta be careful because I just read this quote. <laughs> only seven percent of courses bought are finished seven mm, that's a good study seven percent are finished so what do we talk about all the time the consistency mm -hmm. you know what and i've been a big so like i've read some books but if i'm being honest did i read them to completion no mm -hmm. very few i mean i read a good portion and i got a lot from it but like why are you not completing it you know, or just or or the course. Like I didn't, I didn't finish the Adobe course. It's like just complete it. Because yeah. like I promise you, you're gonna get something from it. Then you're gonna just feel good that you completed something. So just that alone is good. You're gonna feel good. You know. You gotta get good. You gotta get good with that high. Not just, just the that high. It's not just consistency too. It's, it's repetition. Consistency mm. and repetition. Don't don't just go through it once and think you're an expert on it. No, you you have you have the what do they, what do they say that you have the the game. You got the game plan right here. You know you know the plays. You know what it's all gonna be. These are the plays. Study that shit. Learn it. If you, if you don't take the time to learn it with consistency, repetition, it, it ain't gonna help because you might you might unless you really get a grasp of the concept one time. Keep yourself up. Keep your brain working. Keep that shit flowing. Go back. Reread something. You got nothing to do. Reread that first thing that you know. Read that that very first thing you read. You know, two three months ago. Go back and reread that. And then just yeah, keep, go go and keep learning. Recycle that knowledge. Yeah, because you know, personally, it. when I read something, maybe I'm just just ridic ridiculous. But, but when I'm reading, sometimes and I'll like lose track while I'm reading, so I'll have to make like, nope, read it again. I know, oh, I, yeah, always, I always. Nope. me too. I'm me like, too. I beat myself up, like, nope, nigga, you didn't don't, don't skip through that, nigga. You know, like, all right, let me go back. I've, I've been on page seven for 15 minutes. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah. we gonna end it now, man. This, wait, wait, I, wait, I got, I got, I got two things I want to end with. So, oh, Joey, shit. I want Fuck you to, it. I want you to, I want you to check out, write down, um. Infinite banking. I don't want to throw another thing at you, but I feel like this is a good concept for you specifically to learn. Uh, get it tap into me or Joe. Yeah, Joey. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, you can definitely tap in as well, but I feel like Joey is because he's been on his, on his shit with this, with this side of things. He can be this part. You know what I mean? <laughs> so uh -huh. he can take control on this end. So, but the infinite real banking talk though, right, right? Because you know what I mean. Here's the thing. So if Joey's focusing on the stock part, when I get my right, right, and then Joey's got his shit, then he's gonna be able to. I'm. He can charge me to the stocks. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. We work so together. Just another, with yeah, this. right. And there then, you go. and then, just we talked about Hayden Kobe, and I just wanted to show my prized possession of <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> I know this for me because I I hated Kobe a lot too because he's very man here. So I just wanted to give my quick Lakers shout out to the <laughs> the destruction of what he represents. <laughs> Shout out to my boy uh, Kobe though, but yeah. I know Julia like that. Hey, y'all, y'all, y'all see what I got over here on my shoulder though, right? Can y'all see that my it? boy Ball? That's Russie. That's that's uh, Russie. Uh, that's 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 Lamelo Ball. That's the future of the league. Oh, uh, it's such like he it. got hurt, man. Killer. He's still gonna be here. Still gonna be here. I think. Killer. Love yeah, but he's a killer. I, I thought his brother and I and I like Lonzo personally, but I thought Lonzo's gonna be more like like Lamelo came out like for real, and it makes sense. He's the younger brother, you know. He learned, but. He's mm -hmm. a beast. 
I like the mellow ball. That fool's cold, yeah. man. I, I've been, I, I love it. It's, that's like one of those things where, like, that's what that, I, I took the time and I studied his game and I watched him and his development. And this, it, it, it kind of relates to what we're saying, not not entirely, but it's like I knew this fool was gonna be cold. You could just see it, and now he just became he became a G. So that fool's nice. Yeah. Well, hey, I'm gonna tell y'all. Yeah, yeah, we already know who my everyone in the world knows who my favorite player is. But you know who <laughs> my my second? That's my second. Zion is my nickel. <laughs> I love that fool. You know they letting him run point right now. I saw. He's I running point. He's running point guard. I saw that. I was like, "Oh, you can't shit. stop him." That's right. When he dropped like eight dimes because he was running PG. No, no. But here's what he. Here's what I've been. The, the few games the that I've watched. Here's what he does, bro. He literally brings the ball up, and they got a big guarding him. He, he, ain't no big staying in front of him to the bucket. Guards can't stay in front of him, and he's big, dude. He cannot be stopped. Mm -hmm. literally can't be stopped. And once he gets a reliable jumper, it's over. I agree. And a good, oh, and a good he, got, and he got a little vision. He got a little vision. He could, he could pass the rock song. Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. he don't get enough rebounds. That's a, that's a little weird. Cause it's like, how are you, you jump the high, you don't get rebounds. So is that like a lazy? So you get like eight boards a game? He don't get rebounds? Nah, hell no. He's probably like four rebounds a game. No. Yeah, you, which yeah you four think? rebounds a game. I'm looking, I'm looking that up. Ain't no way. Right, right, right. You can't do my man Zion game. like that. <laughs> Everybody hit right. the hit. And we all went. <laughs> we all went to the device and fuck that. 6.9. Seven. Okay, you got seven rebounds, and that's respectable. Yeah, but come on. He jumps high. He, that should be like an easy 10. I'm thinking if LeBron can get like, like eight. So yeah, he but niggas ain't jumping high just to get rebounds. They be positioned, yeah, you know. Steven, he got Stephen Adams on the team. Stephen Adams is like a pure center. He probably gets like twelve boards a game, and he I know he's out there starting. Zion's out here dunking everything, so he's not getting a lot of offensive rebound opportunities. So seven not at all. seven sounds about right. I give him maybe. Yeah. I, I, I thought I eight. think he can get it up another one or two. I think I think he can get it up. I, he do it. He and he will. He's only what second year. Barely. What is he? Twenty years? Twenty one years old? 20? So I think so, something like he's like 20, 21, one of those. Like, like, wait, like, yeah. key, so when I saw Zion, like, so, when he was in high school, right, doing all the dunks, and then, it, but he was doing all these little white boys, right? He's doing the nastiest I've right. ever seen. I'm like, okay, <laughs> this, this dude's fucking ridiculous. He was, he was, he was coming through the lane <laughs> in, a, in a game with, with like three dudes. It's like, <laughs> oh my God, it was so ridiculous. <laughs> I'm like this motherfucker, but every, you know, with the all the haters oh are like, oh, but God. can he play though? Can he do that? Then he went to Duke and he did the same shit. And he was, they were little boys, and they're still little boys right now. And then he went to the league, and it's the same shit. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> man, he's this boy. He, this boy is 6'6", 285, 20 years old from Salisbury, North Carolina. Hey, he looked like he's from North Carolina too. He thick ass, <laughs> <man. laughs> cornbread, cornbread and fed. Yeah, you know he looking a little pancakes. <laughs> 285. That's a healthy no, young but here's man. What's, here's what's crazy about him. Like he's actually like his his dribble to the cup is fast. It's mm, mm, it's a and, <laughs> and I don't know how he does it with his like quick twitch. Yeah, he has a really quick twitch. He has quick he, twitch. he has like Derek Ro like when, like a young Derek Rose twitch, but he's big and, and ridiculous. Yeah, I was he's gonna like, say he's what's like a big rough. ass Derek Rose. Mm, that's right? good. I like that. I, I feel like that's a great. Definition of who he is. He's like a Sean a Kemp Derrick Rose. Rose. Wow. He's like a Sean Kemp Derrick Rose. Which That's is very, kind of scary because, because it's like too. because yeah. the reason the reason why Derrick got hurt is because he was that fucking quick twitch jumpy, right? Reason why mm -hmm. Russ don't get as hurt is he, it's not as quick twitchy. He's still jumping and he's aggressive, but it's not like like quick, quick, like mm -hmm. what, you know what I'm saying? Like when he gets a rebound, mm -hmm. he jumps yeah. up quick. Yeah, it's, it's that get up, that like that like takeoff, that that takeoff thing, whatever you call it. We got that like horsepower to it. It's like more of a horsepower. It's like a takeoff. Yeah, like you but then out. he, but then got touch. Oh, like with the takeoff, yeah. I mean, he's <laughs> he's efficient, man. And I'm telling you, if he can get like a jumper, jumper, it's over. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. I mean, that what his very first game, he hit what four threes. Yeah, I mean, and, uh, that's why you knew he was gonna be great because that shit was phenomenal. <laughs> but, <laughs> but he don't shoot like that. He came out le lefty, just black. It didn't even <laughs> look right. <laughs> oh dear, you got cut out. Oh, okay. Nah, nah, All right, Nick, we gonna end it just now. Hey, thank you, Joey, man. I appreciate it, man. Hopefully, you come on more often, man. Once a month, or something, man. Let's meet me more. Fuck it, I'm in, man. I appreciate you having me on. Let's do it. I'm down many times. And, and, I'm, and I'm coming out there soon, man. Let me know. 
I mean, I'm in, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in your room right now. You're going to have to sleep next to LaMelo, but I mean, that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I with Is Hershey where Will Chamberlain scored 100 points, by the way? Mm-hmm. I want to just put that in there in the podcast. There you go. Hershey is also where they make the kiss, where, the, where people kiss a lot. Because Hershey kisses. Because it's, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful joke. Why y'all let me say that dumb shit? <laughs> that that might have been the worst joke I ever made in my life. And y'all just sat there and took it. Oh man. I got a problem. That was perfect. That was perfect. That was a good way to All right, niggas. I appreciate y'all. All right, boy, boy. We're gonna end it for real. All right, y'all. All right, y'all.